Uh, shalom, everybody. Shalom, shalom. Happy Sabbath. We're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into it. The class tonight is going to be entitled, Great Fear Fell Upon Them. Great Fear Fell Upon Them. All right. We're going to open up with Revelation 11, verse 11. We're going to just jump right into it. Great fear fell upon them. That's today's topic. Because it's falling upon them and we're seeing it. And it needs to be addressed. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Read again. And after three days and a half. Stop. Now, when our people arrived here, we arrived here around 1619. Now, three days and a half is going to get to 350 years. So when you count, when you go do the math, it will land you into 1960s, 70s. That's where it lands, 1970s. And that's when our people start to seek identity. They start to seek nationality. And that's when the heathens begin to rise up against us even harder. Or in a, in a more cunning and conspir- in a more cunning way. Um, that goes into the time of the Black Panthers. That goes into SNCC. That goes into um, uh, the Young Lords. Um, Brown Berets on the, um, the Chicano movement. You had um, AIM. All these different movements start to rise up because our people start to seek identity and they all realize they all had a common enemy. But the Black Panthers were the ones, were the ones that started off, that popped it off. Of course, the Nation of Islam, of course, get, um, Martin Luther King, you involve all, the, all of them. So around that time, it was when our people start to rise up and seek identity. Around the 1960s was a, was a major time in black history in this side of the world. All right, read again. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, uh-huh. and they stood upon their feet. And around that same time, when all those movements I mentioned earlier start to rise up, the Israelites began to rise up as well. But they weren't as prominent as the others, because the others were larger, and they came out first. And then as time went on, they, we're going to go into that, as time went on, they got infiltrated and dismantled and destroyed, and the Israelites, of course, are now on the rise. And now we are the new threat. We're the new threat now. Read on. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. When they stood up upon their feet, it says, great fear fell upon them which saw them. The them is our enemies. The them is the other nations. And our people who love the other nations. Them also. The two-thirds. Great fear fell upon them which saw them. All right? Give me Ezekiel 37. This is where John is getting it from. What John was shown is what Ezekiel was shown Hundreds of years prior. Ezekiel 37. Everything's all right over there? Yep. Everything's all right over there in the line? Ezekiel 37, I want verse um, 10. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And the breath came into them. The breath, keep that word in mind. The breath came into them. Go ahead. And they lived. And they lived. They revived because they were once dead. They lived. Go ahead. And stood upon their feet, and great, an exceeding great army. A what? An exceeding great army. No, stood up. Read that part. And stood up upon their feet. That's Revelation 11, verse 11. Stood up upon their feet. Go ahead. An exceeding great army. And once that happened, great fear fell upon them which saw them. John fills in the gap. He completes the statement. When he rose up as an exceeding great army, great fear fell upon the nations that, that, um, that saw us. Read on. Verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So the whole house of all nations. The whole house of Israel. So the whole house of Israel is that great, there's that great exceeding army that stood upon their feet that the breath entered into. All right? Now we're going to find what that breath is as you read further on. Go ahead. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. That's what, that's what people were, were saying among themselves. Our bones are dry. And our, and our what? Our hope is lost. We have, no, we have no hope in this land. Go ahead. We are cut off for our parts. Go ahead. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. O my people. O my people. The whole house of Israel is God's people. O my people what? O my people, I will open your graves. I will open up your graves. Because our people are spiritually dead. Which goes into Revelation 11 again, but we'll get to that later on tonight. But I will open your graves. Go ahead. 
and cause you to come up out of your graves. Out of your dead state, your spiritually dead state. Go ahead. And bring you into the land of Israel. And bring you into your land. Go ahead. And that's going, but this is all a process of time. We're, we're, we're leave, right now, we're living in that time where we are, the breath is entering into us, and we're going to be brought back into our land. Read on. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Out of your dead state. Go ahead. Out of your death. Go ahead. And shall put my spirit in you. Stop. Go ahead. And ye shall live. So, what's the breath in verse 14? Remember, Revelation 11 said the spirit of life entered into them. So the spirit is the breath. The spirit of God is the breath that entered into them that caused them to live. Read again. And I and shall and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. And once the spirit is put in us and we live, then he'll put us in our land. Then he will put us in our land. Go ahead. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. And performed it, saith the Lord. So it's the process of time. Israel began to rise up. When you read the Valley of Dry Bones, began to rise up. And the flesh came upon them, but there was no breath in them. I mean, they saw identity. They were seeking it, but the understanding of who they were was not quite there. Then as time went on, the Israelites rose up around the same time later on. And eventually the understanding began to grow. We, we gained our identity around the 1960s, 70s. 70s primarily, 70s. All right? So now, let's get... John 6, verse 63, because the breath and the spirit is the same exact thing. The breath of God, the spirit of life, was all the same thing. John 6, verse 63. What gives us life? What gave us life? The book of John, chapter 6, and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit. The word quicken means to bring alive, to revive again. Quicken. Go ahead. The flesh profiteth nothing. Sin or the flesh profits nothing. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Christ says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. The words that I, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Go ahead. And they are life. And the words he spoke unto us, they are life. What words, what words was Christ speaking unto us? Get John 5, the chapter before. Verse 47. No, 46. John chapter 5, verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, for had you believed Moses, go ahead, ye would have believed me. Go ahead. For he wrote of me. For what? For he wrote of me. So had you believed Moses, you, you would believe me. For he wrote of me. Go ahead, watch 47. But if ye believe not his writings. But if ye believe not his writings. Whose writings? Moses' writings. Go ahead. How shall ye believe my words? What were the, what were the Messiah's words? Moses' writings. What's Moses' writings? The law. So what gives us life? The law. Proverbs 7 and 2. So when you hear Christianity cults say the law is done away with, they want us to stay dead. That's their agenda. That is their goal. To keep us dead in them graves that we're trying to we rose out of. They're trying to put us back in them graves. That's their agenda, to put us back in those graves that they placed us in in the first place when we got them slave ships. That's the agenda. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and what? Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments or my law and live. So, so how do they live? When the commandments entered into them. We read earlier that the bones came upon them. They received their flesh, but there was no breath in them. Because the flesh prop is nothing without the breath of life. That's why people had an identity. They sought one Afrocentricity, Afro-American, um, uh, black and proud. All that was all good. But the breath was not there. And so those movements began to fall. One by one, they failed. Black Panthers fell. Martin Luther King fell. Islam fell. Malcolm X fell. Same thing. Um, 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 Mega Evers, Stokely Carmichael, all failed. All failed. All, all of them fell. Go ahead. You know what's heavy about what, what the deacon is bringing out? Because during the same time when the awakening began to happen, like in the 60s, like the period that he's talking about, that's what Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, goes into in, in some detail. While we were waking up, what was Esau doing? Just like what you're bringing out now, fear came upon them because they read the scriptures. Let me just give one scripture, deacon, to go keep. Um, Revelation 12 and 
12. Revelation 12 and 12 is going right into the subject. Because during, like, like the deacon brought out, during the time we were starting to wake up, but like the scriptures say in Ezekiel, when you read up a few verses above 10, it says, but the breath had not come into them yet. But we were still, we were trying to get ourselves together. Esau thinks far away. If he sees a resemblance of waking up, he already sets plans in action. Right, exactly. You got it? Yes, sir. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. Watch this. Listen. Therefore, re therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. For the devil has come down unto you. This is the great red dragon Esau, so you can understand. Go ahead. Having great wrath. Having great wrath. Here's why. Because he knoweth. That he hath but a short time. The question is, how does he know that he hath but a short time? Because he's watching the prophecies. This white man, he reads this Bible. And he's looking in this Bible and he's looking out in society and he said, these are the dry bones. And when I see them starting to wake up, I know that this is coming down. So let me start to introduce drugs. Let me start introducing COINTELPRO. Let me start introducing all kinds of things to destroy them and slow them down. That's what's happening. Y'all in here playing games. Y'all don't realize what's really going down. Go ahead, Deacon. It was in Psalm 7, verse 24, my favorite chapter. It was in Psalm 7, verse 24. Regarding the breath of life or the spirit of life that entered into us, that's causing us gradually to live. So that the word spreads, we're coming to life out of those graves. The graves is not just America. The graves is wherever Israel scattered, that's the grave that they're in. The captivity, the captivity that they're in. Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 24. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 24. And notice wherever our people are located, you'll find <clears throat> primarily three religions. You'll, well, not, I'll say two. You'll find Christianity, which encompasses Catholicism, same thing, Baptists, and you'll find Islam. Wherever our people are found, you will find those dominant religions that they're either in or forced upon them. Wherever we are, whether it be in Africa, whether it be in this side of the world, whether it be in the Philippines, you'll always find, in Haiti, Jamaica, you'll always find our people in some form of a denomination, a Christian, Catholic, it's all the same thing, a Christianity denomination. Always. That's the graves. Keep us in the graves. Because when you think about it, and you examine the Christianity cults, all right, you examine them. Whenever they come at us, they always ask, they always say, you're not the Israelites. You're not the Israelites. Okay. And we ask the, the following question. We retort. Mm -hmm. What are we? Then there's never an answer. It's just, so. Oh, doesn't matter what you are. You're a child of God. Which one? They never give an answer because they do not want you to know because you knowing matters. Mm -hmm. That's why they push the thought of it doesn't matter because they know it matters. Hey, Christ doesn't matter what color Christ is. It does matter. That's why they say it doesn't matter. Whenever Esau says something doesn't matter, be mindful because it does. Most likely when he says it doesn't matter, most likely it does matter. But it affects him if you find out how much it does matter. It will affect him. Read again. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Wisdom is more moving than any motion. Go ahead. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. Go ahead. For she is the breath of the power of God. Wisdom is what? For she is the breath of the power of God. Wisdom is God's laws. And she is the breath of the power of God. That's what wisdom is. That's what the laws of God are. She is the breath of the power of God. Go ahead. And the pure influence. And what is she? And a pure influence. That's the difference between the Israelite movement and all the others before it. She is a pure influence. When you examine Mount of the Kings movement, it was not a pure influence. It was an assimilating influence. It was an integrational influence, which was not beneficial to us at all. At all. That's what, the, the, um, that's what Esau saw as a threat, only because it brought us together. Because Esau thinks carnal. Well, there's two, if they gather together, I'm going to get that later. I'm going to jump ahead. But Esau's thought is if they, if they come together with a common, and realize a common enemy, we're, we're in danger. They don't, look at it, they don't look at the doctrine as a threat. They look at the numbers and the gathering together as a threat. That's his, that's his thought. That's what the Egyptians said. There's too many of them. They might rise up against us. Let's deal wisely with them. 
That was, that was their thought. Egypt, Egyptians thought carnal also. We see things on a spiritual level. And, and the elite of the Edomites also see it that way as well. Right. They knew that Dr. Martin Luther King philosophy wasn't, was not the, uh, the, the program that was going to resurrect us. But they're saying that he's got the charisma mm -hmm. to bring them into the conduit that may bring them and wake them up. So let me get rid of that before too many of them start to, right. if too many of us even start to organize among ourselves, they say, even though they haven't woken up yet, that little bit of organization might lead into them waking up. So me being, uh, me as an enemy, thinking ahead, say, you know what, I need to cut that off at the root before it even gets started. Mm -hmm. That's when he started drafting a lot of our people to send them into Vietnam. There was a lot of things going on during that time. Y'all need to go back and look at some of that history. 60s, yep. Then the, mo the our brothers that went, went over to Vietnam, got hooked on heroin, came back, mm -hmm. jacked up, jacked up yep. and instant dope dealers were made. Yep. Yep. All that went down. That's the reason why the drugs are so crazy now, but it, it came primarily in that system mm -hmm. during that situation. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Deacon. So, read again. Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 25. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence. And a pure influence. And okay, that was integration of assimilation, Hellenism, modern Hellenism. That was not pure influence. And you had, of course, Malcolm X. Now, MLK, of course, he acknowledged toward the end, I made a mistake. I realized I've integrated my people into a burning house. I made a mistake. And they said, oh, kill him now. This guy, that's it. That was their fear. They knew him. He may turn around and go, he made a mistake. Take him out. That's what they thought. They knew, they saw in the long run, he might change his mind. And he did, before he got put to death. Malcolm X also, he said, you're the valley of dry bones. He did a speech, you're the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37. He quoted it. And in, and in his Bible in the Harlem Museum, the Schomburg Museum, he has Psalms 83 highlighted, and it says Negroes under the verse. You gotta I say looked that at it again. myself. They didn't hear you, Deacon. They didn't hear you. In the Schomburg there, Museum there in glitch. Harlem. There was a glitch. In they the have Malcolm X's Bible. His Quran is real small, and his Bible is huge. And he has Psalms 83 under, um, highlighted, and he has Negroes written. When it says, um, cut them off being a nation, he has Negroes written under there, right under the verse. So he knew who we were. I but Islam was so prominent and large at the time, he said, nah, I'm going to go where there's, where there's more of them. It's more appealing. It's more alluring. I'll go over that. And he, I heard, our rumor is that he learned from Israel, that he was Israel. He learned, he learned from them. Mm -hmm. But he said, well, even though that sounds good, these guys are more attractive in terms of the numbers, and it's more alluring. So I'm going to go with the popular, um, popularity. I'm going to go with them. That's what he did. I didn't think they heard you. That's why I said for you to repeat it again. Malcolm X's Bible, like the deacon is bringing out in the Schaumburg Library. That's where you saw that, right? Yep. And Psalms 83. Y'all know what it says in Psalms 83, right? Mm -hmm. Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And underneath that passage, he says, Negroes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I told you they didn't hear it. Y'all got to let that butter get in those cornrows. Let it get down in that head. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Deacon. Now read again, 25 again. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence. Christianity is not a pure. Black Panther movement. They were more about militants. I think it was Karl Marx. He was into Karl Marx and um, the Art of War. What's book? the guy wrote that book? Art of War. Sang Zeus. He wasn't. He, he felt that religion was not for us. He said that's not for us. We're not going to deal with that. We're going to deal militarily. He felt that's more effective. That was T. P. Newton's st ground um, um, stance, um, stepping, stone. stepping stone, or his his ideal was religion's not for us. The Bible's not for us. It's been enslaved us. That was his thought process. So we should deal more militarily, um, economically. In terms of like helping the people with, with um, food and programs to help the people, and it was and it was that was good. It was all good, but the but what was missing from it was the breath. The breath was missing. The flesh was there, unity was there, but the breath was missing. And so the crack introduced, the infiltrations, the provocateurs are introduced, the informants are introduced, the crack was introduced, the um the the jail the um the jail time was introduced. Yeah. Reaganomics and all that. And you had policies in the policies jail started all that changing. Started rising up. So that was so all of that stuff was used to neutralize, isolate, and turn them against each other. They would create false beefs among them, divide them and so forth. So that so that was easily disbanded. Not easily, but it took time, it was disbanded, it was removed. All right. Then you had young lords. Young lords came about. Now young lords want to be called 
Brown Panthers. The, um, I bet they said, don't call yourself, don't, don't, don't call yourself that. Remember, they were, two, they were still divided against each other. Right. He said, no, don't call yourself no damn Brown, brown Panthers. You, young Lords is good for you. Keep the Young Lords. Don't, you, ain't, you ain't us. That was, their, that was their thought process. You know, at the time, even at that time, we were still divided. But the Young Lords still were inspired by the Panthers. They came, they came like a year, a year later. And they, they came like a year later. And they were like, listen, okay, fine, we're Young Lords, but we're going to follow that pattern. Then the Chicano movement came around. It's a car came around. Mexicans came. The Brown Berets came. Inspired by the Panthers as well, as well as the Young Lords, or they're on the same time, I believe, when Young, young Lords are at the same time, I think, or I'm not, whatever. At the same time, and they were also inspired the same way. Aim, same thing. So Judah, pretty much, and Benjamin, because it was Bobby Seale, he's Benjamin, and Ju- Huey Newton is Judah. Those two were like the, uh, the forerunners of, the, of this revolution, black revolution, the, the rising, SNCC, all that, Stokely Carmichael, um, Fred Hampton, all of them part of that. All of them um, rose up and began a revolution that pretty much um, waved, caused a wave that rippled through all the kingdom, Northern Kingdom as well, Hispanics as well, all right, inspiring them. And that was a problem, all right? Read again, 25. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Christianity doesn't flow from God. It is not a pure influence because Christianity tells you, come as you are and stay as you are. That's not a pure influence. Laws done away with, that's not a pure influence. Read on. When it says, what, when it says pure influence, somebody tell me what that means. Pure influence. Because this is what the apologetics are worried about. They're saying, what is it about Israel that these brothers and sisters are taking on to that Bible and we can't crack them? We can't bring them back. Show them your shit, Brother Matthias. It means that they don't have the laws. They don't have the Bible. They don't know the commandments. The pure influence is the laws of God. Right. The pure influence is the laws of God. And it also means that anything else pertaining to the Bible means it's vain. Meaning that the Bible is really about what you just said. When they try to use it in Christianity, it's not pure. When they try to use it in Baptists and these other kinds of things, it's not pure. The only way the Bible functions in its pure, when it's in its rightful hands, that's why I said that before, when it's in its rightful hands, when the correct doctrine is being taught, that's when it's going to have the maximum effect. That's when the Bible's going to come alive. That's when it becomes tangible to our existence. All right, Deacon, that's it. When you mention them, the, the Christianity cults, when you mention them, they, have, they believe it's okay to celebrate New Year's, Christmas, Thanksgiving. I've heard them say it. They advocate, yeah, you could do it. No man judge you and neither and drink or, or a holy day. I'm like, what? That's not what Paul is talking about, Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's not what he's talking about, but I've heard them say it. Then when you say, according to the Bible, is America doomed? Is America doomed? No, that's your interpretation. America isn't going anywhere. When you think that, it's not a pure influence. Because Christianity is... is, is Supports America, supports America, it supports America. If you ask any person in Christianity, is America doomed according to the Bible, they will tell you no. Judge not lest ye be judged. I've seen it. That's how you know it's not pure influence. Now, all the things America has done from her past to her present, has she not violated every single law of God? And there is, within the past, what, the years she's been around? She's violated every single law. So the Ten Commandments, whatever you, whatever you Christians want to subscribe to, America has violated them all. Other gods before me, violating the Sabbath, stealing people, coveting land don't belong to them, lying, adultery, advocating adultery, pushing homosexuality. But America is, no, no, America's just fine. It's, Christianity is not a pure influence. And Christianity is the root of democracy. It's the same thing. It's no different. It's the same exact thing. Read on from pure influence. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Uh-huh. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. That's how you know it in Christianity. Therefore can no defiled thing. You can eat pork now. Just pray over it. No defiled thing can fall into it. You can celebrate Thanksgiving. No defiled thing can fall into it. Celebrate birthdays. No defiled thing. But wedding rings. No defiled thing. New Year's, no defiled thing. Christmas, Thanksgiving, politics, no defiled thing. Homosexuality, no defiled thing can fall into her. She does not have any part with those things. 
but Christianity does. Next verse. Verse 26. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God, and the image of his goodness. Next verse. And being but one, she can do all things. And, rem- and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. What does she do? She maketh all things new. Born again. Quicken. Born again. Go ahead. And, and in all ages entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of God and prophets. What about the verse 24 again? Verse 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. So wisdom is a movement in itself that cannot be stopped. That's the problem. They feel they can try to come against us and try to stop us. They cannot stop it. It's, a, it's more moving than any motion. The Panthers was a movement. It fell. Islam, at one point in time, Malcolm was a movement. It fell. Snick fell. Those, those are all movements. But the scriptures say that wisdom is more moving than any motion. Meaning it cannot be stopped. You can put crack in it. It ain't going to work. Homosexuality in there ain't going to work. It's not going to work. Because no defiled thing can fall into it at all. Right. Jump down to, jump down to verse um, 27 again, the bottom of it. Make it all things new. Verse 27. She, yeah. She maketh all things new, and in all ages entering into holy souls. She enters into holy souls. Go ahead. Not wicked souls, unlawful souls, holy souls. Go ahead. She maketh them friends of God and prophets. That's what wisdom does. Wisdom is God's law. She makes wisdom, the laws of God make you friends of God and prophets. Not no laws of God make you laws of prophet. You can't be a prophet of God without God's laws. That don't make no sense. Exodus 6, 26. An exceeding great army. Because oftentimes you hear Christians say things like, oh, you guys are captains and officers. That's done away with. You guys, are, that's the Old Testament. You guys can't be, Christian, or can't be captains and soldiers and officers now. You're not no, you're not no war. Watch this. Exodus 6, verse 23. The book, the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verse 26. These are that Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies. According to their what? According to their armies. Israel is God's army. We are, the God, we are literally God's military. He has military in heaven and he has military on earth. We are the sons of God on earth. He has sons of God in heaven too. But we're, we're God's, we're the sons of God on earth, we're God's military on earth. That's why it says, as it is in heaven, that it be on earth. It's the same thing. Get 7, verse 4. Same book. Exodus chapter 7 and verse 4. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies. And bring forth his what? And bring forth mine armies. So if you didn't get the first time, you got it now. Bring forth mine armies. Israel is God's army. We are God's military. That's why great fear falls upon the nations that see us. They know who we are. They know what we represent. We are God's military. That rises up. We finished. We got to stop them now. Go ahead. And my people, the children of Israel. Which is his armies. Go ahead. Out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. And what happened again in this place. Give me Nehemiah 2 and 10. So, as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned earlier, you, um, you had uh, CoinTelPro. Well, now it's ChristianTelPro now. You got ChristianTelPro, apologetics, ChristianTelPro. Now, they're coming at us, um, and there's different sects of them. Different, it's not just one group. Don't, don't, get it, don't think it's just one guy. It's, no, it's a bunch of them. But there's one particular sect of them that have, a fat, have an infatuation and an obsession with us, either by FBI reasons or by their own personal reasons. I lean more towards FBI reasons. But the bottom line is, is that there is a certain, the infatuation translates to fear. No matter how, you know, Esau, he's very, very, hmm, how I put it. They're very, very cunning in terms of when they're afraid of you or they're angered, they have to carry themselves in a certain demeanor that comes off like, not, like, like you're a pushover. Like, eh, eh, whatever, these guys, he's black, he wears lights, ha, ha, ha. Oh, Biff. <laughs> Tucker. <laughs> These guys think they're Jews. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're scared out of their mind. Put on that poker face. Amber. <laughs> Tiff. <laughs> they think they're Jews. <laughs> they're afraid of us. 
Hey. Don't fall for don't fall for the smiles. Don't fall for that. They're afraid of us. I'm telling you straight. Yeah, and you know how you know they, that they're afraid of us? You know, when you see when you see they going and sit down and reading Deuteronomy 28 and reading the scriptures that we bring forth and trying to dissect it to find a way to try to yeah. to, to, to debunk it, that show you that there is a fear there, man. That show you that there is a fear. That's how you know they fear. Because when you watch the video, they're always trying to, like, everything we say, every scripture we pull, they're trying to find something to counteract it when they can't. You understand? Right. You don't see them trying to debunk the Quran. None of that. You don't go into the Quran and try to debunk Surah, well, Surah, whatever they call it, Surah, or whatever names they have, mm-hmm. cow. They ain't trying to debunk that. Or the, they ain't trying to debunk the Ma'at, the, 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 the um, confessions. They ain't trying to debunk that. Because the, the, um, the conscious community, they say that the commandments came from Egypt. Yeah. They don't try to debunk them. No. Eat them alone. Because that is not a threat to them. They don't, they're, not stre- they're not threatened by that. They're like, ah, you guys think you're African. That's cool. Well, we can go with, we can run with that. But watch this. Watch this. If I lose my thought. Watch this. They argue and say that our understanding of Jacob being a black man and Esau being a white man is ridiculous. You know how they talk. It's ridiculous. It's preposterous. You guys think that Esau was a white man. <laughs> listen. Listen to me carefully. To listen to the hypocrisy. They'll say that Esau and Jacob were not um, black. Well, not white and black, whatever, right? Esau and Jacob were not white and black, right? Mm-hmm. But then when you examine Ham, let's examine Ham for a second. They'll say that we're Hamites, right? Which Hamites are we? You're Cush. Okay, well, Cush, okay, cool. So Cush had three other brothers, right? Ham had four sons. He had Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan, right? So if Cush is, is the father of Ethiopians, which means burnt-faced, right? That burnt-faced brother had three other men that were his siblings from the same parents. And yet somehow Mizraim is white. So that means that Ham is a progenitor of a white race and black race, kind of how we say that Isaac is a progenitor of a white and black race. But we're preposterous. It doesn't make any sense. I'm confused. Do y'all follow what I just said? You hear the hypocrisy in that? The Egyptians, Ham had Ham was a progenitor of all the um, people of African continent. All of them. Ham is a progenitor of Canaan, Put, Cush, and Mizraim. Egyptians, Libyans, Canaanites, and South Africans, right? But somehow, out of four of those black children, one's white. Explain this to me. I need to understand. Esau and Jacob is ridiculous. Preposterous. (laughs) Mizraim and Cush, white and black. I don't get it. Because they know... That if, if Mizraim is black and Moses looked like Mizraim there you go. and Paul looked like Mizraim and Joseph passed on Mizraim, the juice is black. Mm-hmm. Boom. So we got to debunk that. We got to <laughs> okay, run away around it. Just, oh. No, no, white man. It's too late now. It's, it's, it's stop. The train's already moving now. You're trying to catch it while it's at the stop. We're done. We're gone. Deacon. We're moving. It's stop. It got so bad with them. Not only did they show you during the time of Cecil B. DeMille's uh, Ten Commandments, that movie that comes out every year around Passover time, where they have Woody Stroll, the black actor, playing as the king of the Ethiopians, coming to the Egyptians, played by Yul Brenner, played by white folks. And both of those are, 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 blo- are blood brothers. They're supposed, just like the point you're bringing out. But they got the Egyptians played as white people. And they got the and they got uh, the Ethiopians because they can't lie about them. Nope. Everybody knows the Ethiopians can't lie about them, so they got him as black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me show you how deep they go, how deep their their, their uh, psychotic minds go. Even re- with the recent movie like the Bible, that's the more recent one that came out a few years ago. They had Samson played as a black man. Samson as a black man in the movie. And the Israelites are white people. They got, they got, they got so-called. They got this white man playing Jesus, the white man playing Mary, and all of this. But Samson is a black man in the movie. 
Because that's supposed to represent him, him messing up with God. That's the reason why they did that. That was some, uh, that was some warfare that they were, right, subliminal warfare on that. But if they have Samson as black, that means the whole nation of Israel was black. Right. And that's in the movie. Go ahead, Deacon. That's it. You got to use that. You got to ask him that. So how is the Egyptians white and his brother is black? Is that the same argument we use? Now, we know historically that Esau is a white man. He says it in his own books. I brought it out in the video. The elder brought it out. That's a dead issue to me. Now, you can argue if you want to. Regardless of who Esau is, he's condemned. So even if you say he's not the white man, we can go with that lie. I love, I love that. That's fun to me. Esau not the white man? No problem. He exists, right? If you get the proof, he doesn't exist. He does exist. All nations exist. So therefore, regardless of whoever he is on this earth, whether he's uh, excluding white people, there's a nation on the earth that's condemned, which means all nations cannot be saved. So you're still destroyed. You can't stop us. Stop it. Stop. That's why you, that's why you always just go to Romans 9, 13 for everything. And Obadiah. Romans 9 and Obadiah, and that's, that's the end you of stay it. Stay there. Don't go nowhere else. Nehemiah 2 and 10. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 2 and verse 10. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Coin up, bro. They found it to be a threat that a brother came along and sought the welfare of the children of Israel, of his own people. Heathens don't like seeing that. That's, the, that's Coin up, pro's origin right there. The, the, to neutralize or isolate or to remove a threat that loves and cares excuse me, for their people. We're reading it right here. Get First Maccabees 3 and 1. Hey, how this work today? It says that it grieved. Read that one more time. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 10. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So how does it grieve the nations today when, when they, when, how does this scripture apply today? Today when they see us rising up and we on the street teaching this gospel, that's what grieving them. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because we out there, why are we out there? We out there to wake our people up. We are there to deal with our people. So when they see us seeking their fear of our people, their fear of the children of Israel, we are they teaching our people that, listen, you all are the Israelites. And when they see what they see, and they see in Israel waking up throughout the four corners of the earth, you understand, they see in schools setting up in different countries. You understand, they see that there are men that seeking the fear of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. You understand, and that man is us. You understand, that man, those men is you, brothers. You understand that's throughout the Americas, that's in England, Netherlands, in, in London, in, in the Caribbean islands, that's out there te um, teaching, waking Israel up. You, you all are the ones that, why these men is getting mad? Why these, these heathens is getting mad? Mm -hmm. All right? The first Maccabees 3, verse 1. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 1. Then his son Judas, called Maccabeus, rose up in his stead. Mattathias' stead. Go ahead. And all his brethren helped him. And so did all they that held with his father. Uh -huh. And they fought with, the, with cheerfulness the battle of Israel. Go ahead. So he got his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girt his warlike harness about him. And he made battles protecting the host with his sword. In his axe he was like a lion. And like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey. And his axe, he was like a lion. Like a lion's whelp roaring out the, for his prey. I mean, he was a young, fierce, powerful lion in his, in his time. Go ahead. For he pursued the wicked and sought them out and burnt up those that vexed his people. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the wicked shrunk for fear of him. Great fear fell upon them which saw him. Because this guy rose up for the, for the welfare of his people as well. Matthias. His father and himself rose up for the welfare of their people. We have part again. Wherefore the wicked shrunk for fear of him, uh -huh. and all the workers of iniquity were troubled. Our own people. Go ahead. Because salvation prospered in his hand. Because he was a savior. Maccabees, Matthias, line, they were a line of saviors. Simon, those five sons were saviors. All right? So now, give me chapter, no, get verse um, 43. First Maccabees, chapter 3, and verse 43. 
they said one to another, let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Seek the welfare, let's seek the welfare of our people. Same thing. Let us restore the decayed estate of our people. Go ahead. And let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. That's what we're doing. Fighting for our people and our kingdom. That's what Israel was doing. Jump to verse, go chapter 5, verse 16. First Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 16. Now when Judas and the people heard these words, there assembled a great congregation together. Watch this. Go ahead. To consult what they should do for their brethren uh -huh. that were in trouble and assaulted of them. For example, Camilla, Georgia. That's a prime example of Israel coming together, seeing the evil going on over there, and us going over there and visiting it. And speaking to our people and letting them know what the solutions are according to the Bible. That struck a nerve. And even my pastor reached out to the elder and said, no, listen to them. They're a cult. Yeah. While, meantime, meanwhile, niggas can't be around us. Yeah. You, can't bury, you, you can't be in the same grave as us. Blow grave we'll blow the grave up if you, if you don't get them out of there. But we're a cult. We're the crazy ones. But you mistreating our people over there, get them a high, let you, those over there, they can barely afford to survive over there, we'll let you bill alone. And y'all living comfortable, but our people are split, uh, um, separated from you. You mistreating them over there. But we're the cult? Really? You setting up councilmen up there without any consult of the whole, with the blacks in the council, disregarding them, putting your friends up in, in positions of power right before our, our eyes in the council. And we, we, we're powerless to that, powerless. But we're the cult, really? That's all fear. It is fear. Read again. Verse uh, 16. Want? 16. Now when Judas and the people heard these words, there assembled a great congregation together. To consult what they should do for their brethren that were in trouble. Our people and, over there are in trouble. Go ahead. And assaulted of them. And are assaulted of them. Go ahead. Then said Judas unto Simon his brother, Choose thee out men, and go and deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee. You say some men, Simon, go to Galilee. Go ahead. For I and Jonathan, my brother, and me will, and our brother Jonathan, go ahead. will go into the country of Galad. Gilead. We'll go this way. You go that way, we go that way to go and help our people in these areas. Go ahead. So he left Joseph, the son of Zacharias, and Azarias, captains of the people. So they had men under them that took care of business while they were away. Of course, these guys were rebellious, but nonetheless, these men were set up under these leaders to go and had a certain job. That's so what we have in here, officers and captains. Of the same, for the same reason, they had officers and captains. All right? Now, get me Nehemiah 4 and 1. I go over this all the time, but it's very important to the lesson. Nehemiah 4 and verse 1. We're going to read to verse 8. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 4 and verse 1. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall. It's that same Sanballat from before, that same Sanballat from Nehemiah 2 and 10. That got, I heard that there was a man that was seeking the welfare of his people. It made him angry. It's the same Sanballat. Go ahead. He was wroth. And took great indignation and mocked the Jews. So he was wroth. He got upset. He saw someone, Nehemiah and them, rising up to help rebuild what was destroyed by the Babylonians. The Babylonians had destroyed. And um, this was the, the, um, the, they were trying to clean up what was destroyed by the Babylonians. Nehemiah came to rebuild the wall. Prior to these guys, prior to Nehemiah and Ezra, you had Joshua and Zerubbabel building the temple. Then Nehemiah came around 444 B.C., and they helped rebuild the walls and the home and the houses um, within the walls and the gates and bars and so forth. And these guys were mad. These heathens were upset about that. They enjoyed seeing us live in squalor, like us in the ghetto. Heathens enjoy that. That's why they have tour buses go through Harlem taking pictures. They enjoy seeing us live in squalor. They love it. So a black man come around out of nowhere and go, let's, let's clean this community up. Let's clean Harlem up. Whoa, 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 stop. Hold on. Biff, hey, hey, Biff, hey. Biff, he's going to try to build Harlem. No, no, we got to stop that. No, no, no. Let's put a, let's put a Whole Foods there and raise the rent up. Move his niggas out of here. And call, and call it, how we call it now? Sobo, we call it now? Harlem? Upper Manhattan. Upper Manhattan now. Harlem is not Upper, Harlem is not upper Manhattan. That means we successfully got Negroes out of there. That's what it means. You out. Strike three, you out. That's what it means. Gentrification in full, gentrification in full effect. Read again. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 2. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? He's mocking us. 
They're making mockery. These guys are going to do what? <laughs> They're going to rebuild the walls? <laughs> That's what heathens do. They laugh at you. They mock you. It's a form of, it's an indirect way of intimidation. That's what they do. They mock you, put doubt in your mind. You can't do it. That's what it is. It's the tactic to keep you from being successful. They mock you, make fun of you. That's what they do. For example, there's an image. <coughs> there's a movie out coming on um, that's out now called Black Panther. Black director, all black, pretty much all black cast. And they have a picture of Black Panther like this. It's like this, this clause. They took a watermelon and put it in his hand and said, nigga man. Mockery. Mockery. It's comical, but it, it's, he saw it's hilarious. It's what he does. It's mockery, because black folks are happy to see a black man, a whole black cast in a movie, whatever, even though, of course, it's my, Marvel's behind it. So we can't get too happy, because Marvel's not a black-owned company. Let's, let's, that, let's not be sidetracked by that. Some of us, it's, like, it's the same as Obama. It's the same thing. Oh, wow, black president. Wow, black movie. Stop. Stop. Who put him in office? Who put the movie out there? Don't get, don't get brainwashed with that. I'm happy I like Black Panther. I love, I love comic books. I just watch it all the time. I love Black Panther. But let's not lose track behind who's behind Marvel. Who allowed, who allowed it to be released in the first place. That's not, I assure you, you watch the movie, they're going to put some stuff in there. You're going to be like, the hell? I'm telling you. Don't, get, don't be brainwashed. But there's a, there's a picture also. I wish that brother didn't send to me. It's a picture. Let me see if I have you sent to me yet. Hey, I ain't going to be surprised that that's... Is some kind of gay scene or no. something in the Black Panther? Nope. No? I'm, I'm gonna get to that later. Get to that later. We we'll get to that later. Uh, I'm gonna go to that later. Watch this. Some... Now do that later. You ready? I'm gonna get to that. Here we go. Now I'm gonna say something real quick. No, no. I want to share something real fast. Yeah, that's right there. See, nigga man. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But from the looks of it, it looks pretty true to me. Mockery. Yeah, father. Was it father unknown? Something like that. You know, his father died in Avengers, but somehow his father's unknown. He's eating to the devil. Yes, sir. Now, go, go. That's a mockery. That's a mockery of black families. Right. So they say you don't know who your father is. That's right. what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Now, go to what I sent you. Group me real fast. Now, don't, 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 put, don't put it up yet. How many of y'all, hold on, don't, don't put it up yet. How many of y'all want to see Black Panther? Raise your hand. Be honest. Who's going to see it? I'm going to see it. Put your hands down. How many of y'all saw Brother of a Nation? Raise your hand. Wow, all praise is good, good. I'm about to be this. I'm about to tear y'all up, boy. Hey, hey, Woo! Hold on, hold on. You, hey, oh, that's hey, a lineup. That's a lineup listen, question. Listen, you, you gave them credit too early, man. Those of you all that went to the movies and saw Birth of the, a Nation, not that live stream it or steal it off of the internet. <laughs> Who paid to see in theaters? Raise your hand. Okay, right, you see the numbers? Yeah, we got a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Put the picture up, uh, um, the image on um, Goopy. I posted a picture. Watch this. Now watch this. Now you got all these jakes happy about Black Panther. Woo! Yeah, Black Panther. Woo! Wakanda, not a real place. Yeah! Black heroes. Yeah! T'Challa, T'Chaka. Yeah! Blow it up, please. Now, none of them were raving about that movie there, Birth of a Nation. I went to the theaters. I went to the theaters. And the seats are not as full. I guarantee you, Panther seats was full. They were out the door to see that movie. Because Negroes love fantasy. Love it. They love fantasy. Love fantasy. Oh, wow. Wow, Black Panther. Wow. Look at his suit. It's made of vibranium. Is that real, brother? No, but it's still vibranium. Yeah. Grown 40 year old men saying that nonsense. Then you have a real black hero who was real, who actually existed, who fought for his people, named Nat Turner, funded, directed, and written by a black man. And the white man goes, he's a rapist. Niggas go, wow, get him, raw. They freaking dog pile him. When it was all a lie, he was not a rapist. It was proven to be a lie. The woman lied. But, but again, propaganda made it where black folks turn on this brother who enacted a real superhero. And now we're losing our mind because Marvel give us a fake one, a fake black one. We are a spiritually dead and dumb people. I'm going to tell you straight up. Spiritually dead and dumb. It's all, those are the words that's anonymous. We are a sadish people. Sadish, that's the word the Bible uses. We are a sadish people. 
Hey, that wouldn't be an excuse for them not going to see uh, Birth of a Nation because Christopher Columbus was a known rapist. Mm -hmm. And our people love to celebrate that. Right, and watch this. White folks are mad about Black Panther, right? But Birth of a Nation funded white supremacy. The original Birth of a Nation. That incited the KKK. That incited it. Made it go even larger. No one mentions that. No one argues about that. But nigger man. But what about the Klan movie I made, Birth of a Nation, the original one? Because that movie was basically him doing a response against it. Mm -hmm. That's why he named, named it Brother of a Nation. Y'all realize hours. that? I know y'all realize that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, no when you all watch a Birth of a Nation, Birth of a Nation is about a brother that was fighting against oppression. You understand that that, that was killing a lot of Edomites. You know, so you all, you all see why Esau had to try to shut that down. Yeah, he did. You know, and then he come with this Black Panther, which is a fantasy novel. You know what I mean? As I said, I like watching Black Panther when I was young growing up. Mm -hmm. Used to watch that, you know, um, Justice League and all of that. But all of that is fantasy, you know? Mm -hmm. All of that is fantasy. No, we, we live in a real world, but Esau is pushing this fantasy on our people. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no place you want. You, what's, what's it called? Wakanda, Wakanda. You know, it's no Wakanda, man. You <laughs> understand? It's no Wakanda. So right. you, we got to get that. We got to come to real life and watch our real things, man. You know, Birth of a Nation, that's, right. a, that's a movie that everybody, every right. black person here in America should go watch. Right. You know, but what did Esau did? Esau blackballed it. Mm -hmm. The same way, oh, Esau trying to blackball this right. movie right here, but, but because... The, you know, you got Edomites back in it that create the movie. They, they ain't going to really black. They can't blackball it. Right. Because money's know? in their pocket. They ain't going to waste that money in their pocket. And it incites a sense of dignity in us right. watching Pat Panther. Black heroes. You saw a video, a video of little kids dancing to it. There's a video of kids was like, yeah, black. They was doing a little dance to it because they were happy. The black kids was happy to see a black superhero on screen. So it incites a sense of, of a superhero. A black man could be a superhero fighting for his people. He's a leader. He's smart. He's wealthy. He's not gay. Right. Thank the Lord. That's the point Almighty. that Thank I wanted God. to bring out. Right, right, right. Not not just the gay thing about what like what Deacon Malachi is saying about inspiring so like like us have a superhero among us. Mm -hmm. Although it's it's fantasy in terms of 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 real of real situations like Nat Turner, but it still can have an effect on the children to look up to their own as opposed to looking up to quote unquote white superheroes. Now some may argue Watch this. I think of, like a Negro thinks. Some of y'all may say, what about Brother Renation? He's married to a white woman. Oh, that's true. Yeah, maybe. Sometimes she looks kind of weird to me. I don't know. I'll leave it alone. But the point is this. Regardless of who he's married to, he still understood. He still stood by um, the strength of inspiring in us a sense of, 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 black, of self dignity by showing us a true black hero that existed and fought for his people. Mm -hmm. That was his point. Regardless, now we all know, of course, you know, he should marry, he, he's on the world. He hasn't repented yet. But nonetheless, you got black folks that say he married to a white girl, blah, 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 blah. But then they go and see a white produced movie about black heroes. Right. What's the difference? There is no difference. Regardless. And the difference is that Nat Turner was a real person that fought, for, that fought and loved his people. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. And I guarantee you, I can be wrong. Might be a spoiler. I guarantee you the villain is, is Nat Turner. I guarantee you. The guy playing the villain is going to be the good guy. It's going to be um, Revolver Burst. So it's like Zod and Superman. It's going to be the same thing. Watch. I guarantee it. Never fails. There's going to be some kind of message in there to love everybody. We're all one and let's all integrate. Watch. Watch. Don't get too excited. I like it because it's entertaining. The, the graphics. Woo! The graphics and the CGI is excellent. But watch the story. Watch. Pay attention. Now, let's get... Um, what I want. Nehemiah 4, verse 1. You want to say something? Okay. Nehemiah 4, where we were at. We're at verse Oh, so I had the hand up, three. right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, uh, this is Donovan. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, Brother Abdon. There's been um, blogs written about uh, the Black Panther sequel that's coming out in 2019. Mm. And um, one of the rumors and some of the stuff that I've read personally, is the story in regards to the, the sequel, which won't be, Black Panther won't be in there, but the women who are the bodyguards of the Black oh, the Panther, soldiers. Panther, they will be the, the main characters. Right. And one of the sidebar of the story in regards to that is that 
the women won't be will be all lesbians basically right right so um we surprised we right surprise. so so there there's blogs going on if mm -hmm. you read the entertainment magazine and stuff like that they had stories on that right but now you don't see it no more but earlier uh, uh, before the movie was released uh what was it 2017 you had stories about that story and who wrote who was commissioned to write that script which is a lady who uh, wrote these little pamphlets mm -hmm. about the, you know, little, little, mi little, little girls who, right. oh, I forgot these stories that they, right. little, little, little stories, right. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a white lesbian woman who is basically commissioned to, to oh, write the, the sequel to that. Don't film. be surprised. Right. It's like it's like with Blade, with Mark, when Blade, when Mark, when Matrix came out, one, that was great. Black a sister wrote that. Of course, they hid that hid that away. But Chelsea brother stole that screenplay, stole it from her. Her name was um, her name was um, what's her name? Her name was, I forgot her name. Her name escapes me. But she wrote Matrix, whatever. Sophia Stewart. Thank you. Then the Wachowski brothers. Um, stole the screenplay, made it their own, then they made part two and three to cover themselves and ruined it. So while two and three was bombing, they came out with Blade, a black superhero Marvel again. And one is good, and two was better than one. And then three came out, what they do? Put the white guy in the front, white woman in front, Nightwalkers. They had Jessica Biel, and they have Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool in there. He's the whole main, main character. And Blade's all getting beat up by some... It was horrible. It was horrible. But that's what they do. And they see... The black superhero getting too much shine? Okay, push the black behind the back, put the white folks in front, put the gays in the front. That's what they do. This is what they do. Read on, Nehemiah 4. Let's continue. The verse book 3. Of, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4 and verse 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Yeah, no, here, no, no, no. Oh, here, O oh, our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head yeah. and give them for a prey in the land of captivity uh -huh. and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. The evil speech against us and against you. Go ahead. For they, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Yeah. So built we the wall and... And all the wall was joined together. So all that mocking and all that distractions they were trying to do, it was a fail. It was a failure. So he so so says, so we built the wall and all the wall was joined together. Go ahead. Unto the half thereof. Unto the half that was still standing. Go ahead. For the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work together to build. The, this is the true reconstruction era of our people. We had a mind to work and to build and help our nation. Go ahead. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and Arabians, go ahead. And the Ammonites Japanese. and the Ashdodites Africans. heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wrong. It pissed them off. This pissed them off greatly seeing us, all the mockery and all the distractions they were trying to cause. It did nothing. It was a fail. It was a com complete failure. Go ahead. Verse 8. And conspired all of them together. What they to, do? And conspired all of them together. And it conspired all of them together. Go ahead. To come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. And to hinder them from building the land or us now building our nation. They're trying to hinder that. With all their little meetings, we'll get to that later. All that little nonsense going on. That's the, that's the agenda. To stop Israel from being built up. Get Nehemiah 6 and 10. Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 10. Afterward, I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Metabil, Mahatabil. Mahatabil, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God. The temple, go ahead. Within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. Why don't you hide here? They're gonna, the people are trying to kill you. Hide here, or you'll be safe. Go ahead. And I said... Should such a man as I flee? Should I as a leader have fear and, and run when someone's trying to kill me? No. Go ahead. And who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go I'm in. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not hiding anywhere. I'm not going nowhere. 
Go ahead. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him. Based upon that advice he gave me, God is not done with this guy. Go ahead. But that he pronounced his prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. See that? For Tobiah and Sanballat, the same guys that were mocking us, the same guys that got mad when Nehemiah showed up for the welfare of his people, they hired our people against us. This would be what you know as informants or provocateurs. That's them. The ones that infiltrate, come into the, come into the um, amongst you and get paid off to cause all kind of issues and rifts between Israelite groups and so forth. That's the agenda. That's what they do. Go ahead. Verse 13. Therefore was he hired. He was paid off. That I should be afraid. That I should show myself fearful before anybody. Go ahead. And do so and sin. And be seen as a weak man before all. Because fear is sin. Go ahead. And that they might have a matter for an evil report. That they might reproach me. So people will look at me and say, damn, this guy, tried to, he's a leader. He hiding the temple. What kind of leader is that? Exactly. Tried, tried, basically tried to defame Nehemiah's character. That's what he was trying to do. He was trying to, trying to defame Nehemiah's character by convincing him or manipulating him into hiding when there was no danger at all. That was the agenda. Go ahead. Verse 14. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and Sanballat according to their works. And, and on the prophetess Noah died. With a sister. Since so it was also paid off. Go ahead. And the rest of the prophets. And all that, the other sellouts. Go ahead. That would have put me in fear. Go ahead. So the war was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month Elul. In 50 and 2 days. Watch verse 16. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof. And all the, and all the heathen that were about us. Saw, that, saw these things. They were much cast down in their own eyes. They were what? They were much cast down in their own eyes. Because they could not stop it. Go ahead. For they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. The subtle genius. Yep. The subtle genius. That's what they, it's the same thing being said. God's done with these Negroes. We got to get rid of them. They're a problem. Yep. It's the same thing. They realize God's done with them. We can't stop these guys. They're a problem. We're going to take different or more severe or cunningly severe measures against them. Because these guys, we can't stop. We can go on the street and corner where they're at with a bullhorn and talk over them while they're talking. That's not going to help. It really isn't going to help. If that's your tactic, it's not going to help. Give me the thumbnail I sent you with the elder. Remember earlier, we read about them mocking us and making fun of us. Right? This is a video that was put up by the uh, Christianity cult, called themselves Apologetics. He did a video and he used IUIC Arizona as a backdrop for his video arguing about how we're not the Jews, and yet he's yet to do a video showing who the real Jews are. He still has none yet. Waiting for that. It's never going to happen, but. Um, but the um, thumbnail up. And real quick, Ezekiel, give me Ezekiel. Real quick, give me Ezekiel. I have a question for the real, the, the, for the real Jews in Israel today. I have a question for them. Mm. Mm. I just want to just read this real quick. Let me see if it is. Ezekiel 39. Let me see if this is what I want. Yeah. Got the thumbnail? I sent it to you. It's the first thing I sent. It should be way up on the top. There's a picture that says fake. It's a comment. I screenshot the comment board of this video where the heathen um, apologetic or Christian, Christian, to, Christian tell pro, him, they decided to do a video, I guess, arguing about the Israelites or the BHIs, as they call us, and use IUIC Arizona's camp as a backdrop. This is the same heathen that decides to peek in our school through the blinds to see how big it is. That's him. It's the same heathen. And I'm not lying. He did that. Now, this is, this is uh, his thumbnail for the video. So it got right now about 30,000 views from that thumbnail alone. 30,000 views from the elder's face alone. Blow some more. So someone asked him a question in the comment board. Read the question, read the question please. <clears throat> Why is this guy being used as the image for fake Israelites? Who is he? Aren't there a whole bunch of them? What makes this guy so significant? I'm very interested in who this is and why his face is being used. Let's see what his response is. Go down. The cover image. The thumbnail. He is the leader of the largest and fastest growing One West BHI sect. Plus, he is in charge of the guys behind us. That's the problem. Now, let's just take a step back for a moment. Largest and fastest growing, right? Now, right, 
let's go back to Exodus. Mm -hmm. They're multiplying. There's too many of them. Yep. Now watch this. Us teaching to keep the commandments, right? What's the danger in that? No, there's none. There's no, keep the commandments. What are we doing to somebody else? Are we hurting someone? Yes. Do we teach terrorism? Do we teach to strap a bomb to your chest, blow yourself up and get some virgins? Do we teach the pedophile to little boys? Do you teach that? Gang violence? Kill white people? Just, just think about it. Just, just think. We teach y'all don't eat pork, shrimp, clam, lobster, right? Wear fringes in your clothes. Keep the commandments, right? Keep the feast days. Don't celebrate New Year's. Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, um, birthdays, right? What's the evil? What is the evil behind it? What's the threat? Think about it. Our actions are non-threatening. Um, I'm speaking as a man, like Paul was saying, carnally speaking. Nothing that we teach y'all in this room to apply to yourselves is a threat to society as a whole. Don't, women can't wear pants no more. What's wrong with that? Men can't be, well, you can't be homosexual. Don't do homosexuality. What's wrong? Marry your own people. Take care of your kids. Be a mother. Be a father. Be a husband. Be a wife. Be a peace with all men. What are we doing wrong? Why, why would that be a problem if it's lodging and fast growing? If it's, if it's growing quickly and largely, why would that be a problem? Isn't that helpful? If we teach all our people as a whole to do that, be um, self-sufficient, marry your own kind, take care of your wife, take care of your kids, don't celebrate this and that. What, what's the danger in that? I'm, I'm speaking as a man. I know the danger. It's a rhetorical question. I know the danger. But I'm just asking on a carnal level, like in terms of like an actual like violent damage, threat. Is that damage? Is that really violent or damaging? No. So what makes us a problem? Hey. The, point, the problem is the act. Is the actions behind what we teach. Exactly. That if we taught that and Negro, Negroes didn't do it, it wouldn't be a problem. Don't eat pork. All right, whatever, Negro. <laughs> eat pork anyway. That wouldn't be a problem. The problem is the actions behind what we do, what we teach. When we say get in order, when they see us in order, that's a problem because they're actually doing, they're actually practicing mm -hmm. what they preach. Christian churches do it. No, don't do it at all. It's done away with. Mm. That's what they teach us. So that is the danger. We are the, it says they are the leader of the largest and fastest growing one West BHI. Now, there's many so-called BHIs, many of them. Why is our other space being used in the forefront? Because, I, because they see us as the biggest threat. Because when the other is like can't so organized and uniform, I'm not, not putting us up on some high pedestal, but Esau sees us as the most organized he sees us as the most orderly and uniformed, and so that bothers him. Organization bothers him. Organization is threatening. That's why Panthers were attacked, SNCC was attacked, Malcolm was attacked, because those were order. All those things, even though it was all off, it wasn't right righteousness, it was order behind those things. He had boycotts, rallies. That's organization. That's order. Marches. That's order. Organization. Military. Black uniforms, black berets, guns. That's order, organization. You understand? That's order. So he puts their arm on up. He puts fake there, right? Fake and has laughing. That's the mockery, right? So I want to see this prophecy here because if fake means fake Israel, that's what that means. You're not real Jews. That's what that word fake means, right? So we're not the real Jews. Give me Ezekiel 39 verse 25. So the real Jews are in the land today, right? Obviously, with the fake ones, there must be real ones. Ezekiel 39, verse 25. I'm sidebarring for a moment. Ezekiel 39, verse 25. The this book is of, prophetic, by the way. Hasn't happened yet. Go ahead. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 39, and verse 25. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. Upon who? Upon the whole house of Israel. What's the whole house mean? All 12. All do have mercy upon all 12, right? Go ahead. And will be jealous for my holy name. Go ahead. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me. I mean, I will forgive them of all their sins, and while they, um, because of why they're, captivity, why they're enslaved in the first place, I will forgive them all their sins and take them out, there, take them out of captivity. Go ahead. 
when they dwelt safely in their land. When they dwelt safely in their land. Go ahead. And none made them afraid. I'm going to return. I'm going to return them to how they once were safely in their land. Go ahead. When I have brought them again from the people. Watch this. When I have brought them again from the people, meaning the nations. Go ahead. And gathered them out from their enemies. As I did before. Go ahead. And am sanctified in the sight. And am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations. Watch this. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. Uh Uh-huh. But I have gathered them unto their own land. Who? All 12, right? Gathered them into their own land. Go ahead. And have and have left none of them any more there. What's the there? The other nations. And have left none of them any more there. Are all 12 tribes in Israel today? Because the so-called will say, oh, well, the, the 10 tribes are assimilated. They're, they're integrated among the nations. The Bible says all 12 tribe of you, all 12 tribes of you should be in the land. And none of you will be left there anymore. Not, I'm going to say Judah, you can't say it's Babylon here, because Babylon, that's where the only Judah returned, and remnants of Ephraim returned. So that's not referring to that. This is referring to another time, when all 12, he says, I will have mercy upon the whole house, and put all of them in their land, all at one time, not two years, not a line, that's not what it says. He says, and no more, it says, and left none of them any more there. So, why are all 12 tribes not in Israel today? Why do you still gather them in the land today? Because you're not them. You're not the people of God. Because God would have put all 12 tribes of y'all in the land in 1948. Mm-hmm. Only put three tribes in there? That don't fit prophecy. Help me understand. We're fake, right? Well, have the real ones explain that chapter and verse. Leave us alone. Yes. Also, um, Deacon, verse 27. On um, the most I said that he'll be sanctified in them. Right. And in the land of Israel today, they have what's known as the, uh, the that gay parade in yep. Tel Aviv. Yep. It's a humongous transgenderism, homo yep. gay parade. Let's in the up. land of Israel, going yep. on right now, this very day. And they like to suck on baby penises. They like to suck on baby penises. Babies born, they, they, they suck the blood off the, ba- off the penis with their mouth to cleanse it. The rabbi does that. Where is that in the Bible? Where did Abraham put his mouth on Isaac? Where is that in the Bible? Abraham giving head to Isaac, really? Hey, that, that happened. Blow jobs, th- blow jobs for anybody. Just blow jobs for the babies. That, These guys are crazy. These heathens are nasty, man. Yo, These heathens are straight, vile bastards. You are vile bastards. Hey, a rabbi did that in Brooklyn, right? And the rabbi gave, it was on news and it was in the papers. The rabbi gave the babies herpes. Yeah. You know, because he used his, exactly what, what I thought was just saying. You know, he used his mouth to, to, to um, sterilize, the sterilize the baby. And he had herpes and he gave it to the babies. Mm. You know, so. You but know. somehow they're sanctified in the start of many nations. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, okay. before you move on, right, we are touching, you are touching early on, you are, you are pull up the, the comments there, you know, that, that these dudes making and they put the elder, they put the elder, the elder face on their video. And they call and they put up that word fake, right? And they put that label on us that that um we are the most grow fastest growing one and so forth. You know, but let me show you let me show you all something, man. You know, um you brothers that, that come amongst us, as Deacon Item was saying, does we teach terrorism? Does we teach murder the, no, we here and we teaching you brothers and sisters to what? To get yourself right, get your life right. You understand? Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That w- that what we're teaching you, brothers. A lot of you, brothers, we when we just met you all, you all was on this level. You understand? And you all changed your life. And we could see the change in you. In a lot of you, brothers and sisters, we could literally see the change in you all. You all let niggas no more. Some of you all used to be in gangs. Some of you all was on the street. Some of you all was just ain't doing nothing with yourself. And you all come and you all learn this gospel. And you all changing. You understand? And I literally see brothers changing. Change before my eyes. I like, I see some brothers come up in here weak and feeble as hell. And within a couple months or a couple years, they learn the scripture. Brother, brother change. You know, he turned into a superhero. I'm like, damn, this brother, his whole spirit changed. He's different. 
And these is these is the things that they see in why they say, listen, we got to stop these guys right here. Because we literally changing the minds of the people. You understand? Remember, years ago, we said that's what we're going to do. Remember, the, L, the bishop did a class. He said, our job as men of the Lord is to change the minds of the people. You understand? Going to the scriptures and changing mind. And that's what's going on. That's why all these people is, is, is repenting and, and following after us. You understand? So, But what you got to ask these guys is what are they doing for our people? You understand what I'm saying? You know, because you brothers are amongst us. You all see what we are doing. What these guys, what these dudes and then what are they doing? Nothing. They ain't doing nothing for our people. All they want to do is fight against anything that, that, that they see is a threat that is trying to rise our people up or teach our people some form of, of who they are. You understand? So that's why they watch at us as a threat, man. You know, so... You all look at that, man, for real. Let me say something real quick. And, and the change is being made with the sisters as well. Name some of the problems that we have as, in the community. I'm going to be quick, Deacon. Somebody, just, just give me a quick list of some of, the, of some of the destructive things that's going on among our people in this country. Stand up and say it. Just re- reel them off. Shalom, Deacon. Shalom. Shalom. Um, you got... Um, Parents, um, people, marriage, no, non-marriage, drugs. Drugs. Let's start with that. Drugs. Yeah. Drugs. We got um, gangs. Gangs murdering each murdering other and all each of that. Other. Okay. Abortions. Ex- abortions. Yeah, you know, Y'all hear this? Yeah. Where is the tenacious dedication for them to fight? Ag- if they really, quote, unquote, care for black people, how come these bastards, just the way you said it, how come they're not dealing with those issues? And those things are destroying our people wholesale. But you want to know the reason why they're not touching that? Because they love that. They hate They hate the movement, if you will, that's against what they love. That's why they're against this. That's what it is, straight up. Nehemiah 9.27. Nehemiah 9.27. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9 and verse 27. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, uh-huh. who vexed them. And in their time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. Uh-huh. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. Gave them what? Gavest them saviors. Coin to pro is afraid of that. Coin to pro. Saviors goes back to the word judges or leaders. That's what a savior is. You men in here are grooming yourselves in this truth to become potential saviors or judges of your people as Solomon was, as David was, as Joshua was, as Caleb was, Mattathias was, um, Maccabees was. That was your job. That's your goal. And the sisters, their job is to support the saviors. That's your objective. That's your job. That's your mission. And bring forth more, and bring forth more saviors. That's your job. That's your objective in time to produce mass produce an army that's your sister's job to mass produce not i'm not saying that's your only job <laughs> i'm gonna get it twisted but in time that is your objective our sisters love that by the way i'm, I'm gonna prep myself let me, prep, no, let me fix myself that is your objective because our women they love that they would they would be made fun of and kill themselves if they couldn't do that hey you remember in egypt deacon i turned that you remember what was Pharaoh? What what Pharaoh was doing? Pharaoh said, "Listen, we gotta." And he, he remember he was trying to kill all the saviors. Yeah. He said, "All the male childs, we gonna kill all the male childs. Make sure any male child born, kill them. Mm-hmm. You understand? Even yeah, that's the same thing they're doing today, but they're doing it through science and um and surgery. You're feminizing him also. Right, right, right. Okay. But the same thing they're doing today, even with um, with when they say they say, listen, these people is multiplying too much. You know what? Any any male child born, we gonna kill them. So the same thing with same thing today, man. Right, but then sterilization is police brutality, one or the other, or feminizing, feminizing or them, rigged or rigged jail. juries and jails. Right. Give me first Ezra five and seventy two. The book of First Ezra chapter five and verse seventy two. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight, hindered their building. Uh, the, t- the temple, go ahead. And by their secret plot. By their what? 
and by their secret plots. Point Cell Pro, FBI, secret plots, go ahead. And popular persuasions. And popular persuasions. Oh, that word, please, persuasion, definition as well. Go ahead. And commotions. Popular persuasions, they're popular persuasions and commotions. Rallies, go ahead, marches, go ahead. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. So they, they hindered the building of the temple with Zubabel and Joshua for two years because of their secret plots and plans to stop us from building. I want The first thing I want is I want um, urban. Now, we mentioned earlier about a thing, a group known as the apologetics. There's a, there's a number of them that are coming, a particular group coming against us, right? Now, there has two groups. You have apologetics. Then you have another part called urban apologetics. Now, let's go back to the 60s. Back in the 60s, you had, you had white schools and you had colored classrooms. White water fountains, colored water fountains. Black people sit in the back of the bus. White folks sit in the front. Y'all follow what I'm saying? You're listening. Urban. In relating to or characteristic of a city or town. So the first definition for urban is city life. Town, that's what, the, that's what the word means, city or town. So I'm pretty sure most apologetics live in the city, right? Or a city, right? So we have to scratch that because it can't mean urban. Because we have a group called urban apologetics. And it just so happens that the majority of members in this urban apologetics happens to be black folks. Now, we're all one in Jesus. But somehow there's an urban apologetics and an irregular apologetics. Read the next definition of urban, please. Fancy words for, watch, next one. Denoting or relating to popular dance music of black origin. So it says denoting or relating to popular dance music of black origin. So when it has a black origin, it's urban. You understand? Urban refer relates to black that's what it relates to. It can't be referring to dance music. Why are they called urban apologetics? Or my folks will say things like, oh, it's in an urban area. Yeah. That's, not, that's referring to black communities. Yep. So you have apologetics, yep. and then you have urban apologetics, which means they're segregated. <laughs> we're BHIs, but you have black apologetics. Right. Yeah, yeah, but we're all one in Christ Jesus. Why are we all, why aren't you all apologetics? What's the urban for? What is the, a bunch, you have more blacks in that group, so they're the urban group. Why? Aren't you all one in Christ Jesus? So I'm showing you that there's even racism and hypocrisy and segregation in their own nonsense. In their own nonsense. They're the niggas among the, uh, right, they're the Negroes among the apologetics, right. One more time, I missed something. I missed that one. That's the part I wanted. Right there, it says denoting popular black culture in general. That's what urban means. So when you have urban apologetics, it's black cultured about black. That's what it is. Black apologetics. So in the white segregation. There's white folks in it, but it's majority blacks. Right. The point is, is that they understand the the dumb Negro that's sitting there. He's, he's sitting there. He don't realize that his own group is segregating him. Right. His bias against him. Yep. He's in a separate graveyard. Yep. He'll go to Camilla. He'll be put on the nigga side. That's yep. basically what they're saying. You can't be buried with us. Read 73 again. 73. The book of 1 Ezra chapter 5 and verse 73. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions. Stop. Give me persuasion. Popular persuasions. Read the second definition. Persuasion. Uh, a belief or a set of beliefs, especially religious or political ones. Especially religious or political ones. Go down some more. Yeah, quick that. Translations. Go to right there. Go to a group. A group or sect. A group or sect holding a particular religious belief. Uh-huh. Synonyms. Uh, the synonyms. Group, grouping, sect, denomination. Denomination. That's the persuasion. A denomination is a persuasion. Christian denominations are popular persuasions. Go ahead. Party. Like politics is also a persuasion. Camp. Side. Faction. Affiliation. School of thought. Belief. Creed. Credo. Faith. Philosophy. philosophy which is apologetics. 
So now go to what I posted, what the brother um, posted. Read that. There's a brother named, brother named Ron Shields posted this on Facebook for brothers to be aware of. Read what it says. Peace and shalom, family. We will be at the Christian Apologist Truth Summit event today. So he's going, he, he, he's going to be sitting there watching. The, he's going to go there to see what they're, what they're pushing. Watch. Go ahead. At Macedonia Baptist Church, 521 MLK uh, Drive, Cartersville, GA, 30120. Go ahead. There are some lectures that we will be sitting in on that would be interest you. So he's going to sit there and watch what they say. So he's going to sit there and watch them discuss this. Watch. 11 a.m. to 11.50 a.m., is Christianity the white man's religion? Yes and no, because it comes from Babylon and they adopted it. So the answer is today, yes. Go ahead. 12.50 to 1.40 p.m. Who are the Hebrew Israelites? Us. And, ho and how should Christians respond to them? Don't. <laughs> Next one. 1.40 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Consciously unconscious. The black, quote, conscious community and the truth. They're all in the same category. They're all, they both hit the Bible, so they should be friends with them. So now, that's, that's a pop, right there, that's called a popular persuasion. That whole little meeting right there they're having, that's a popular persuasion to, to hinder the growth of the truth. But it's not going to work. It didn't work with our forefathers then, and it's not going to work now. You're wasting your time. It's a dead effort. Futile, right. Give me, um, oh my God, this is a heathen tactic. Now, IUIC Dallas did a video called... Uh, Back to the drum board, scoffer, back to the, back to the drum board, something along those lines. And there's, uh, once again, the same group again, came with a bullhorn. <sighs> yeah, you guys, John 3, 16, Galatians 2, you heat, heat, blah, blah, blah. Disrupting the teaching of brothers in Dallas. So the brother, so okay, fine, I'm going to deal with you. So as he's teaching, done with them, the brother that I was learning was getting confused. Because that was the agenda, to confuse him. He said, aren't you both using the Bible? He started getting confused. So he goes... Give me Sirach 11, verse 7. Get that real quick. So the brother in our camp goes, give me Sirach 11, verse 7. You guys leaving the Bible, but you're doing this wrong. You're, doing, you're violating this. This is what, this is what he said to the, to the, um, the, there was the Jake and the Edomite arguing back um, together. You know, the, the, the heathen and his pet arguing together. And, uh, of course, the Jake was more bold and outspoken than his master. Well, master sitting there watching, of course, sitting there watching, watching a, his work, you know. A watchdog. Right. Read that, please. The book of Sirach, chapter 11, verse 7. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. So they kept talking, 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 talking while he was talking. Go ahead. Understand first and then rebuke. Uh-huh, next part. Answer not, that, answer not before thou hast heard the cause. Uh-huh. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. So he goes, well, the Apocrypha is not canon. So that, that means something to me. That, that's not part of the Bible. That's not, that's, Catholics use that. That's not canon. So you guys got to learn in time how to smash and bury these demons without the Apocrypha. Okay, no Apocrypha, no problem. It's like putting one hand behind your back. You got a shotgun on the other hand. Blow! <laughs> Put the pistol behind you. Put the shotgun on the other side. Give me James. I'm going to say the exact same thing. And that is canon. Both are canon, but... Right, that's how... Both That's, are canon, right, but I'm mean, just, I'm, you know, right, I'm being right, right, right. sarcastic. Right. James then, 1, verse 19. Then after that, then you bring the apocryphal and tears behind up. Yeah. James 1, verse 19. The book of James, chapter 1, and verse 19. The heathen tactic with them is this. They do this amongst all the camps now. They attack our camp. They attack another camp in California. They do is they, they come with the bullhorn, and they talk over you to drown out the teaching of those who are learning. That's their agenda. They, they, with the loud, with the born, yeah, Jesus is love, God is love, you guys are hatred, blah, 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 blah. And they try to drown you out, and they just keep rambling, rambling, rambling. That's what they do. But they ain't drowning out the drug dealers. They're not. They ain't drowning out the murderers, no, the dead. gang fights, the, 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 the shootouts. They'll they ain't dealing up. with none of that. They'll get beat up. James 1 verse 19, oh. that's why. They know what to deal with. James 1 verse 19. The book of James, chapter 1 verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Let every man be swift to listen. Go ahead. Slow to speak. Shut up. Stop talking. Swift to speak. Slow to speak. Go ahead. Slow to wrath. Don't get so angry. Don't get so riled up. Jump to verse 26. Now, this is, this is actually worse than Sirach 11, verse 7 and 8. Watch this. James 1, verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious. If any man among you seems to be, because he's not really. 
but they seem to be religious, meaning they seem to have to fear God, seem to worship God. Go ahead. And bridleth not his tongue. And keeps talking while you're talking, running his mouth while you're running your mouth while you're talking. Go ahead. But deceiveth his own heart. I meaning he doesn't believe what you're saying. He just wants to run his mouth. His mind's already made up. He deceives his own heart. Go ahead. This man's religion is vain. Boom. Your religion is garbage. When you keep running your mouth, talking, 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 while I'm talking, the Bible's coming out, your religion is void of truth. Deacon. It's garbage. So, uh, so now, Surah 11, verse 7, you just got buried. That, that's put that to the side. This is worse. So the tactic of talking, 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 talking proves that your religion is garbage. 26 again, 26. James, James chapter 1, verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious uh -huh. and bridleth not his tongue, uh -huh. but deceiveth his own heart. Uh, his mind's made up already. This man's religion is vain. His religion is garbage. Next verse. Pure religion. Pure religion that's not vain. Go ahead. And undefiled before God and the Father is this. He's going to explain a pure religion. Go ahead. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Go ahead. And to keep himself unspotted. From the world. So you celebrating New Year's, Thanksgiving, Christmas, eating unclean food, you are spotted in the world. The Bible says keep yourself unspotted from the world. So if Christians do what the heathens do, you're not unspotted from the world. Your religion is vain. It's garbage. You ask them, do you celebrate New Year's? They're going to say, yeah. Or they'll lie and say, I don't spell the New Year's. I spend time with my family around that time. Okay, so you celebrate it then. Because you're, the, you're in the audience of it. You either, with the, you either do or don't. So you are, they are, Christianity keeps you spotted in the world, not unspotted. So verse 26 buries the whole thing of using the bullhorn and talking and talking and talking and trying to interrupt things. It says their religion is vain. And it says be slow to speak back in verse 19. Being, listen and be slow to speak. If you're dealing with Esau and you're trying to, if you're trying to correct him with the Bible, it's us, that's a futile attempt, period. Yeah. It's just, it's, there's no need to even try. Now, Lord, I know they don't like me saying that, but that's what the Bible says. That's yeah. in, that's in uh, Psalms 58 and 3. Mm -hmm. That's where that's written. Could I get that real quick, Deacon? Yeah. Just real quick. Let me just show you this here. You just have to just give them, this, give them the scripture that cuts them, and that's it. I'm not trying to win them over. I'm not trying to get them to agree with me. They're my enemy. When I come teaching this Bible, I have nothing to say to them but the judgment from the Most High. That's it. The only people I'm interested in teaching is my people. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 58 and verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They're born Satan. Go ahead. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking lies. You cannot straighten out a snake. When it bites you, it's, just, it's purpose is to kill you. Go ahead. Verse 4. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. That Christianity garbage, that apologetic foolishness that our people are tied up in, they're going to end up dying because of that. Go ahead. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her they're ear. They're like a deaf adder that stoppeth their ear from hearing the Bible. You could try to convince them, bring them in, and they don't want to hear the correction. You're trying to bring out the correction, the laws of God, the righteousness of God. They are not hearing it. Go ahead. Verse, Verse 4. Continue. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Read. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Read. Which will not hearken. That's the part I wanted there. Which will not what? Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. These snakes will not hearken to the voice of charmers. The voice of charmers is talking about the Bible. You cannot charm these snakes. That's what it's saying. You cannot take the laws of God and charm them. That's what you don't understand. You and your Christian stupidity. You're going to end up dying. All right, Deacon, that's it. Because, again, when you're dealing with your people and teaching in the audience, eat them or wait until you have an audience to so your people to try to debunk you and say that's not canon. So you have to use scriptures so that your people know, listen, that this, 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 this is canon. Here's a piece of supporting it. You got to do it. Because what they'll, they'll do is they'll go, well, that's not canon. Then Jake start getting all confused. Yeah. So you got to learn how to use verses where if they come with that, come with that angle with you, you can use others. You have to have a contingency always. You have to have something behind always. So to back you up, y'all understand what I'm saying? Can't just use one. John 10, verse 22.
The book of John, chapter 10 and verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. This is Hanukkah. Go ahead. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then, then came the Jews. No, 23 again. 23 again. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Solomon's porch, which was before the temple. So now, give me um, Leviticus 23 and verse 34. Because the argument is that Christ did not keep dedication. He just walked in the temple. I don't know how you get that from. They were observing the feast there in the temple. Leviticus 23, verse 34. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 34. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Uh -huh. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. First day is the Sabbath. Go ahead. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no serve our work therein. So the seven days, um, that's it. Yep. So seven days shall you work, and the seven days also a Sabbath. The last day is a Sabbath as well. All right, so now, or um, well, the eighth day. So now let's get mm, John 7 now. No, First Peter 2, verse 21. First Peter 2, 21. So that's in the law, right? Tabernacles? Isn't that in the law? Yes, it is. 1 Peter 2, verse 21. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto ye were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, uh -huh. leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Right, do what he did. Go ahead. Who did no sin. Who did not break any laws. Go ahead. Neither was guile found in his mouth. And spoke no lies. So he did no sin. He did no sin and spoke no lies. Right? So let's get John 7, which is three chapters prior to John 10. They're saying that he didn't keep feasts of dedication. It doesn't say in that chapter he kept the feast. Okay. John 7 verse 1. The book of John, chapter 7, and verse 1. Just in case they send the urban Christianity cult members against you. You never know. The urban versions. They might send the Negro ones. Negro Terminators. John 7, verse 1. John, chapter 7, verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. Because in the, in the video, he was done with the black one, not the Edomite one. He was done with the, with the urban one. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm giving y'all precepts. Just in case you may deal with your own kind, the Oreos. For the strawberry, st strawberry Oreos, the bl black outside and red inside. John 7, verse 1. John 7, verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Go ahead. Now the Jews' feast of the tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. His family was saying, his brothers were saying, don't you go up to the feast and do some miracles over there. Go ahead. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. Don't you hide him for? Go ahead. And he, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. Read verse 4 again like this verse. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. Go ahead. And he himself seeketh to be known openly. So you got a dude that's on YouTube that's blasting us, corrupting us, and they don't show their face? That's cowardice. You want to be known openly, but you hide yourself? You're not, you're not truthful. You're coming falsely. You're a coward, and you're, and, and you're a waste of time. Read verse 4 again. Deacon. Yeah. And it's evil because the scriptures say, thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Yep. That's according to prophecy. That YouTube hiding your face, there's an agenda behind it. Yep. And they know they're not the truth. That's why they don't tell their Right. Read on. John 7 and 4. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret... And he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. If you will, share, his, his family is testing him. If you will, show yourself to the world. What you hiding for? His brothers, did, watch. We don't going to tell you why, why it says to him. Go ahead. For neither did his brethren believe in him. They didn't believe in him. He had his own brothers and sisters like, yo, you lying, bro. You ain't who you say you are. You lying. You ain't. And that's, that's their big brother. 
You, Christ, pff, Negro man, please. I fixed you up. You fell off the, that's how you fell off the ladder that I put a band on your leg. You, son of God, get out of here, man. We got the same parents. They didn't believe him. Go ahead. One eventually does, but they didn't believe him. Go ahead. It was James. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, my time is not yet come. It's not my time yet. Go ahead. But your time is always ready. You can always go and teach. You, my time, you can go and teach if you want to. He's going back and forth with his siblings. Go ahead. The wor- verse 7. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, uh-huh. because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. That's why I can't go over there like that. Go ahead. They're trying to kill me. Go ahead. Go ye up unto this feast. I go, I go not up yet unto this feast. Uh-huh. For my time is not yet full come. Go ahead. When he, had, when he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast. He went not, up there to the feast. Go ahead. Not openly. But secretly. Go ahead. But as it were in secret. Like he said he was. They were trying to kill him. Go ahead. Then Jesus sought him at the feast and said. Then the where, Jews sought him at the feast. Then the, then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, he is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. Go ahead. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Fear of the elders that wanted to kill him. Go ahead. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Stop. So, the, so Christ, the point is, is that he was present at the feast. It doesn't say he was observing it. It says he was present there. Now, watch this. Give me Exodus 34, 18. So when you're present at the feast, what are you doing? You're observing it. That's what the law told you to do. It told you to be there. So when Hanukkah took place and he went into the temple, where was everybody else? In the temple observing the feast. Exodus 34, verse 18. The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 18. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month of Bib. For in the month of Bib thou camest out of e- out from Egypt. That's Passover 22. Verse 22. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks. Pentecost. Of the first fruits of wheat harvest. And the feast of, in- of ingathering at the year's end. Tabernacles. Go ahead. Thrice in the year Passover. shall... Passover. Pentecost and, and um, Tabernacles, go ahead. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God. The they should Lord do what? No, they should do what? Shall all men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. So all men children, or everyone, including their households, were to all appear in the area in which the Lord says to appear to, to observe the feast. Was the Messiah present during Hanukkah? Was he present during Tabernacles? Yes. So he was keeping the feast. Stop listening to demons. They're demons. Let's go to now Esther 9.27. It was said that Hanukkah is not of the is not of God, it's of man. Okay. Okay. Esther 9.27. The book, the book of Esther, chapter 9 and verse 27. The Jews ordained and took upon them. And upon their seed, and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to their writing, and according to their appointed time every year. Uh, every year, go ahead. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation. Forever. Are we still, are we still generating right now? Okay, go ahead. Every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. So Purim is a feast day. It's a manner of God. It's of God. It's in the Bible. So I don't understand what these guys are talking about. These Christians, I'm telling you, they do not believe in the Bible. They don't believe what it says. Their whole objective is to hinder you from believing it. Their job is to teach you to become unbelievers. That's their objective. To turn believers into unbelievers. That's the agenda entirely. And do what thou wilt. Satan's law. Hey, let me say one more thing. Yeah. I had a person challenge me at work about the Hanukkah. Because I told him I don't, I don't deal with that. I don't deal with Christmas. I deal with Hanukkah. 
He said the same thing. He said, where did you get that from? So at that moment, an Edomite comes in. I said, I got it from them. He had the yarmulke on. He had everything. I said, I got it from them. So I stopped the man because I wanted him to say, he, he says that it's fake that we made it up. I said, so you're telling me all these people that you've been seeing doing this on Eastern Parkway, it's a, they're liars? You should have saw his face. Because they were comfortable telling me that I'm following it is fake. But when you stop that shiny white man with that yarmulke on his head, that's singing Ava Nagila, all of a sudden it was like, whoa. The shiny white man. Okay? Shiny. So that's another shiny. thing. Now he was, he, he didn't say he was speechless. You scared a massive. Scared. He that's was it. speechless. I said, it's only fake because black people are doing it. Right, right. So it's the same thing with those Christian apologetics. Why do you not go up to them who are ruling in the Middle East and controlling the entire planet and telling them what you're following is fake? And where you got it from and why you made it up? Hey, he you would never tell that people. story. <laughs> hey, hey, hang now, him. I want to read okay. one scripture goes with what, what you just said right there. Mm -hmm. Because um, I want you to go to Matthew 18 and, and start at verse 18. Because who set up Purim? Who set up Purim? Purim. Mordecai set it up, right? Our forefather. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, all right? He set it up, right? Also, um, the dedication. Who set that up? Judah, the, 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 the Hasdians, um, the Assyrians, the Hasmoneans, <laughs> you know, Judah Maccabees and those brothers, they set that up, okay, which I, which I thought in the time uh, when Christ was walking there, they were the Pharisees, okay, so these men, they set up these high holidays and they say for us to keep it. Was they great men? Was the Lord dealing with these men? Okay, so read this scripture right here. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Read I, on. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything. So he say if two of you come together and you agree on earth touching anything, read on. That they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Because anything we say, you understand, the Most High, he agree with it. You understand? That's why he got it written here in the Bible. So our forefathers set up high holy days and said, listen, you all keep this, these feast days and so forth. You know, they, the scripture said, whatever is bind on earth is bind in heaven. All right? So the Most High allow that. He allows that. Why? Because our forefathers, they were great men. You know? So the most I allow that, man. All right? You can I turn? Get Black Panther, Wikipedia, Black Panther Comics. Now, Black Panther Comics came out around a time, around the same time in the 60s by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. These two were Edomites, were the creators of Black Panther. But they didn't get Black Panther from the group. Our, our brothers, Black Panther, this, this, is, this predates right there. Black Panther predates, well, his Black Panther predates the Panther Party, 1966. Black Panther is a fictional superhero. Hold on, is a what? Is a fictional superhero. Emphasizing the fictional. He's a fictional superhero. Go ahead. Appearing in American comic books published by Marvel Comics. The character was created by writer-editor Stan Lee and writer-artist Jack Kirby. That's the old guy in all the movies, the old white dude, Stan Lee. Go ahead. First appearing in Fantastic Four, number 52, July 1966, uh -huh. in the Silver Age of comic books. Uh -huh. The Black Panther's real name is T'Challa. His father's name is T'Challa. T'Chaka. Go ahead. King and protector of the fictional of the African... What? King and protector of the fictional, fictional, but African nation called Wakanda, uh -huh. along with possessing enhanced abilities achieved through ancient Wakandan rituals, Chala also relies on his proficiency in science, rigorous physical training, hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, and access to wealth and advanced technology to combat his enemies. Right, T'Challa, go ahead. Black Panther is the first superhero of African descent in mainstream American well, he's comics. One of the first, he's the first black comic book hero. 
one of the first, says first. He's the first one. Go ahead. And you had Static Shock after that. Luke Cage came afterwards. Go ahead. Having debuted ye- ye- uh, years before early African-American superheroes, such as Marvel Comics, The Falcon. Falcon. Nin- so he came um, before Falcon also. Go ahead. 1969 and Luke Cage, came- 1972. Uh-huh. Or DC Comics, John Stewart. That's Green Lantern. He came before him also. In the role of Green Lantern, 1971. Mm -hmm. The Black Panther storyline, which ran through 13 issues of the Jungle Action series. Damn, Jungle Action. He's part of Jungle Action series. Go ahead. Numbers 6 through 18 is considered to be Marvel Comics' first graphic novel. Mm -hmm. In one storyline, the Black Panther... Go down, go down, go down. I don't care about that stuff. Go down. Concept and creation. The Black Panther's name predates the October 1966 founding of the Black Panther Party. See, it predates it. It was in July. That came in October. The Panther. So it came. So Black Panther comes before the Panther Party. Go ahead. Though not the Black Panther logo of the party's predecessor, the Lowndes County Freedom Organization, nor the segregated World War II Black Panthers. So you tank- have black folks called World War II Black Panthers, the Tank Battalion. You have Black Panthers in World War II, black folks. Called Black Panthers. Go ahead. He is the first black superhero in American mainstream comic books. Very few black heroes were created before him, and none with actual superpowers. Damn, he had no powers. Blank man. Yeah, blank man. All right, handicap man. Go ahead. <laughs> These included the characters in the single issue, low distribution, all Negro comics. So we had our own, so all Negro comics. Go ahead. 1947, go ahead. 1947, Waku, Prince of the Bantu. Stop. So you had an all Negro comics called Prince of the Bantu. So Jake knows, so Edom, Jake knows, Edom knows that amongst the Bantus you had Negroes. You understand? It says this is the Negro comics. Waku is one of them, Prince of the Bantus. Go ahead. Who starred in his own feature in the, uh, in the, I'm the, I'm the best title, Jungle Tales. Here we go get the jungle. Jungle Tales. Dang. Go from, ahead. Ma- from Marvel's 1950s predecessor, Atlas Comics. I right, go down to the beginning in the guest appearance. Beginning in a guest appearance in Fantastic Four, number 119, February 1972. The Black Panther briefly tried using the name Black Leopard. Why? To avoid connotations with the party. See what he did? So he called them Black Leopard for a while to avoid any affiliation with the Black Panthers, who came after. Esau was so mad about, about, the, about the Black Panthers, it said, change his name to Black Leopard. We don't want them called Black Panther. They were mad. Go ahead. But the new name did not last. Because the group didn't last. The group got destroyed by a Pro and they gave him Black Panther back again. Go ahead. The character's name was changed back to Black Panther uh-huh. in, a, in Avengers number 105. With Chala and... T'Challa. With T'Challa explaining that re- renaming himself made as much sense as altering the Scarlet Witch's name. So right there, you see, that's his, that's his, that was his original design. They were going to draw him like that. They was like, nah, we're going to fix it. That looks horrible. Multicolored. Black Leopard right there. So they, eventually, they changed it. Um, in time, it made his son become Black Leopard. I mean, oh, yeah, Black or Cold Panther or something nonsense like that. Cold Panther. That's all I want. So the point I'm bringing out is that when Black Panther came out, it was before the actual Black Panther Party came out, and they were so upset by the Black Panther movement that they changed the comic book um, character's name to Black Leopard temporarily to avoid any kind of affiliation or, I guess you could say, inspiration to that movement or that group. Bring attention to it, it, right. So let's get um, Herb. I sent you Herb.ash, Cointel Pro Tactics. Yeah. Read that. Um, read the goals. This is Cointel Pro's goals. This is a, a reviewing of the of the Cointel Pro tactics. Read that. Number one. Goals for maximum effect- of effectiveness of the counterintelligence program and to prevent wasted effort. Long range goals are being set. Long range means, like you said earlier, they see ahead. Contingency plans. Okay, if this fails, we have A, B, and C. If A fails, you got B, C, and D. If D fails, you got F, G, H, I. Long range. Go ahead. Number one, prevent the coalition of militant black nationalist groups. Prevent the coming together of black militant nationalist groups. Go ahead. The whole, that's the reason why they hate the, what they call the 12 tribes chart. Yes. 
Yes, That's the coalition yes, that they're yes, against. Yes, yep. They don't want the tribes to come together. These bastards ain't slick. We know them. Yep. Okay, we understand what they're mad at. Go ahead. And I'm in, calling them bastards because it's in the Bible, just bastards. in case anybody want to know. Zechariah 9 and 6. Yep, go ahead. In unity, there is strength. A truism that oh, is... Hold on. I was going to say, the chart is the first sign of the nation coming together. And that's scary. To look on that sign, you were walking around not knowing who you were. Okay? Now it says in the scriptures to make a stick and put it together and write the names on it. So the people who are against you that spend billions of dollars to keep your identity hidden, calling you Negro, calling you black, calling you Puerto Rican, calling you Dominican, calling you urban, or call, calling you Nubian. Now they're like, yo, what the hell is this? Look, we spent all this money to hide their identity, and they got a piece of piece of wood in the street telling the people who they are. That's the first sign of a nation waking up, and that's in the Bible. Okay. That's, the, that's the beautiful the, the twelve <laughs> tribes in the Bible. Yep. Listen, if I was the an sign. enemy, I would be sign. I wouldn't be able to sleep if I walk by in the street. I spend so much time in slavery. Stop you from reading. Stop you from writing. Beat you, took the Bible from you, and now you go in that same book I kept you from, and you put a sign up with all those names on it, and you're telling the world that this is who you are? Hell yeah, I would want that 12 tribe chart gone. Yep. That's a scary thing. That's what you're reading, number one. And great fear fell upon him. Okay. Go ahead. In unity, there is strength. In what? In unity, there is strength. Yep, that's what the Lord says in Psalms 133. Go ahead. A truism that is no less valid for all its triteness. An effective coalition of black nationalist groups might be the first step toward a real, quote, Mau Mau, black revolutionary army in America. Ah, Ezekiel 37 stood before them an exceeding great army. Go ahead. A well, a spiritual army, not a, not a physical one. Go ahead. The beginning of a true black revolution. And that's what this is, a true black revolution consisting of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who all make up the 12 tribes. Not just blacks. And that even in itself is worse. Because the Panthers is just half right. right. Now you got all of us together. Like, oh no, this is worse. Because they got all of them united now. That's not, this is not good. We're more dangerous than the Panthers were. Go ahead. Number two. Prevent the rise of a, quote, Messiah. Of a judge, a leader, a savior. Nehemiah 9. I saw I brought the scriptures out. Judges, a leader, saviors. Nehemiah 9, 27. Prevent the rise of... Of a Messiah or Messiahs, plural. Go ahead. Who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement. Malcolm X might have been such a Messiah. He is the martyr of the movement today. That's why I fell. It's not as strong as it was back then. Go ahead. Martin Luther King, Stokely Carmichael, and Elijah Muhammad all aspire to this position. Elijah Muhammad is less of a threat because of his age. He was too old. King, die soon. Go ahead. King could be a very real contender for this position should he abandon his supposed, quote, obedience to white liberal doctrine. And for the end, he'd begin to. And they said, take him out. Hey, he did just, when he spoke at his last Long speech. Term. Right. When he spoke at his last speech, I'm going by what it just said here because he said if, when he let it go. Mountain he top. said, right, the, the mountaintop speech. That was on April 3rd, 1968. He made that speech. April 4th, he was killed. The very next day. Yep. Check it out. The very next day, he yep. was killed. And you know what's heavy? He about said, that? We as a people will get to the promised land. That's what he said. I may not get there with I you. I may not get there with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. He was telling you, You're the Israelites. Yep. He said, Oh, this nigga got to die. Next day, boom. Yep. That's history. That's written already. And the government, um, the, the family won a case against the government. They want a settlement because the government admitted that they were responsible for his death. That's also hidden, secret, that the family, King family won against the government in the court case that they were responsible for his death. So it's not nothing new or uncommon. It's known to those who read. Yes. What Deacon Yaw was upset about, he gave the speech on the 3rd and on the 4th he was killed. How many of y'all ever watched The Hunger Games? Okay, you saw how they was trying to control the people with propaganda? Remember when they were speaking, just one old man put his hand up like this with three fingers. They grabbed him in front of everybody and just shot him. That's how Esau thinks. The minute you think of any part of 
organizing or any solidarity or any unity or anything that they deem as against what they set up, they want to kill you. Just like when they called a girl, they was watching a girl with the camera and they called her, they said, the people may think that what you did is a, a, a threat against us. So they constantly kept letting you know, we're watching you and we'll kill you the minute we think that you're coming together in unity. It's the same thing with what you see, the purple and gold garments, the 12 tribe sign, us in order, marriage is coming, that's the order they don't want. Right. They're, they're terrified of that. And if they don't kill you um, literally, they'll kill your, your character. They'll assassinate your assassinate, character. Assassinate, right. Defame you, they'll assassinate your character. Get, get, um, read on, read on. We're going to go a little faster. Go to Car provide. Carmichael yeah. has the necessary charisma to be a real threat in this way. Ah, so Carmichael had the threat to be a next messiah. Go ahead. Number three. Prevent violence on the part of black nationalist groups. This is of primary importance and is, of course, a goal of our investigative activity. It should also be a goal of the counterintelligence program to pinpoint poten potential troublemakers and neutralize them before they exercise their potential for violence. Next one. Number four. Prevent militant black nationalist groups and leaders from gaining respectability. Now, be it again. Prevent militant black nationalist groups and leaders from gaining respectability. By, by putting up articles of them allegedly arresting young men innocent in their innocence. That's an example of discrediting them, respectability. He's in, he's a, he's in law enforcement. He's a lawyer. He's so-and-so. That's a way of gaining, of trying to remove respectability from the leaders. That's what they, that's what they do. They're in this, they're in that. That's, that's the whole, that's a... A um, provocateur informant's yes. job. That's what they do. Yes. They push them, and there's usually one group that does that. But I'll leave it alone. But that's the, the, the what the ESO used to use, particular of our own people, to push the thought of, oh, look, he's in that line of work. See, he can't be trusted. He's in that line of work. He can't be trusted. It's the same thing as removing respectability from the people. Go ahead, read on. I'm going to say it. By discrediting them to three separate segments of the community. Go ahead. The goal of discrediting black nationalists must be handled tactically in three ways. Tactically, go ahead. You must discredit those groups and individuals to first the responsible Negro community. To the upstanding blacks, the ones that are not in the downtrodden in the bottom, the upstanding ones first. Go ahead. Second, they must be discredited to the white community. Hate group. Go ahead. Both the responsible community and to the, quote, liberals who have vestiges of sympathy for militant black And make them look bad in front of good white folk, allegedly good white folks who are liberal, who love all, care about all, rights for all. Make them look bad in front of them, too, so they don't have no partners, no alliances. Cut all, cut, burn every bridge they can run to. Go ahead. Simply because they are Negroes. Third, these groups must be discredited in the eyes of Negro radicals. Of their own groups. These, they must look bad in front of their own. Go ahead. The followers of the movement. This last area requires entirely different tactics from the first two. Publicity about violent tendencies and radical statements merely enhances black nationalists to the last group. It adds, quote, respectability in a different to make way. make them appear violent, it gives them more, it gives them more props. Right. They, they say fighting against the powers that be. Fight the power so it incites more encouragement among our people when they do that. So we'll make them, look, we'll make them seem violent. Next verse. Number, Number five. five. Right. Next plan. Go ahead. I said verse. A final goal should be to prevent the long-range growth of militant black organizations. Uh-huh. Especially among youth. Especially among the young brothers. Go ahead. And sisters. Go ahead. Specific tactics to prevent these groups from converting. From doing what? From converting. Uh-huh. Young people must be developed. That's the agenda. That's the reason why they use the term fractured organization, because they don't want the young people to learn what we learn. They they expect they want the old, they want the current generation to quote unquote die out when there's no successors. Read this comment again, please. The Top cover image. That's the guy put the video up. It's the same guy. Put it up. Not that question. Go up. Read that. The cover image. He is the leader of the largest and fastest growing One West BHI sect. Plus, he is in charge of the guys behind us. That is why. Go back to the number five again. It's the same, it's the same goal. It's the same thing being said. Number five. A final goal should be to prevent the long-range growth of militant black organizations. Exponential growth. Uh-huh. Especially among youth. Uh-huh. 
specific tactics to prevent these groups from converting. From converting, changing the minds of the people. Go ahead. Young people must be developed. Tactics must be developed, meaning how to stop them. Holding summits, how to stop them, how to respond to them. It's the same thing. Hey, you know what's going to shoot them in the foot? Can we, bring, can we put, bring back the image that you just had there? Yeah. And look at his words. This is the power of God. It says, why is this guy being used as an image for fake Israelites? Who is he? Aren't there a whole bunch of them? Because there's a lot of Israelite groups. What makes this guy so significant? I'm very interested in who this is and why his face is being used. That's what the comment was posted. His response, no class, Malone. The cover image, he is the leader of the largest and fastest growing One West BHI sect. Plus, he's in charge of the guys behind him. I see Arizona's behind him as a backdrop. Now, watch this. Because they don't understand prophecy and they don't understand God, that's what's going to hurt them. The bishop never, ever says he's the leader of anything. You have other Israelite groups that they tell you this is the leader. You can only get saved through him. You can only get gathered together. You don't see none of our camps saying that the bishop is the leader. The same way Christ never walked around declaring himself leader. What was the government telling Christ? Answer me. Are you king of the Jews? What he said, if thou sayest. <laughs> if thou sayest. So the bishop don't never walk around saying he's a leader of anything. Even if you pull the bishop out of the way, this has grown so strong and so powerful now, it cannot be stopped. Okay? So we don't have to declare the bishop leader of anything. Okay? He's a face of hair. He started it, but does he ever show me one video where he himself says he's the leader? You see other Israelite groups saying that they're the leader. You have to gather under them. You can only get saved by us. This is the God sent so-and-so. But the bishop was smart enough to never ever declare himself a leader because Christ never did that either. Get New York Times article. New York Times. Read that, November 15th. The FBI's, the FBI's dangerous crackdown on, quote, black identity extremists. Now, we fall, now this is a, uh, an attack on us, but they're using Black Lives Matter as the cover for them attacking us. We're not stupid. Those of you who are wise understand this is referring to us. Yep. Because Black Lives Matter is nothing more than a black lesbian lives matter movement. That's all it is. It's no difference. It's homosexual agenda all under it. It's nonsense. So go ahead. Go down to the, they can read it. They got pictures. FBI report. An FBI report leaked in October and scrutinized during an oversight hearing of the House Judiciary Committee on Tuesday warns of an emergent, emergent domestic terror threat sweeping the nation and threatening the lives of law enforcement officers. The, quote, Black Identity Extremists, BIE movement. Or BHI, same thing. This designation just recently invented by the FBI. Newly invented. Go ahead is as frightening and dangerous as the Bureau's infamous COINTEL program of the 1960s and 70s, mm -hmm. under which J. Edgar Hoover set out to disrupt and destroy virtually any group with the word, quote, black in its name. See that? B-H-I's. Same thing, I'm telling you. We don't now notice IUIC doesn't call ourselves that. We stay with Israelites, period. We don't subscribe to black, that's redundant. But regardless, they're still putting that box so it still falls on us as well. Go ahead. Today, entirely nonviolent black activists face violations for their civil liberties and even violence if they're deemed part of the BIE. Mm -hmm. They're groups, right. Deemed or groups, right. Go ahead. The 12-page report prepared by the FBI Domestic Terrorism Analysis Unit in August and later made public by foreignpolicy.org both announces the existence of the, quote, black identity extremist movement and deems it a violent threat, asserting that black activists' grievances about rationalized police violence... Racialized, racialized. Racialized police violence and, in, and inequities in the criminal justice system have spurred retaliatory violence against law enforcement officers. It links incidents of violence by a handful of individual citizens like Michael Johnson, 
who shot 11 Dallas police officers in July 2016. They're taking the actions of one man and trying to group it into a whole bunch of people. And it's just one man's actions. Right. Trying to say he was part of a group. Make some out of nothing. Right. Go ahead. To quote BIE ideology. They can't prove. Go ahead. And predicts that perceptions of unjust treatment of African Americans and the perceived unchallenged illegitimate actions of law enforcement will inspire premeditated attacks against law enforcement. Yeah. This is fiction. It's a lie. Daryl Johnson, a former Department of Homeland Security intelligence agent, when asked by foreign policy in October why the FBI would create the term, quote, BIE, said, I have no idea. <laughs> And what? And I'm at a loss. I don't know why they did this. It doesn't make any sense. Go ahead. Michael German, a former FBI agent and fellow with the Brennan Center for Justice, Liberty, and National Security Program, said the, quote, black identity extremist label simply represents an FBI effort to define a movement where none exists. Mm -hmm. Basically, ahead. it's the black people who scare them, he said. That's what it's made for. They're afraid of us. Great fear fell upon them, which saw them. That's what this whole thing's about. BIE is about the fear of Edomites against blacks rising up and coming together. And it's black identity. So you seeking an identity in the eyes of the so-called white man makes you a threat. Ain't that crazy? You believe you're an Israelite. Oh, you're scary. Put him in jail. Scary. I'm frightened. He wants to know who he is. I don't like that. Put him in jail, Bob. Throw away the keys, Biff. Go ahead, Brenner. Do it, Brenner. That's what they, this is what they do. It's this madness. Go ahead. Could you name an African-American organization that has committed violence against police officers? Representative Karen Bass asked Attorney General Jeff Sessions at Tuesday's no, hearing. We watched this before. When she, uh, the sister asked the, the Edomite a question. He was talking around it. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Uh, the researcher, I got to go back. You know how to talk. I got to go back and research it. I'm not sure. We're gathering information, but we're not gathering information. I got to figure it out, but not figure it out. They're talking contingencies. They're all in circles. Go ahead. Can you name one today that has targeted police officers in a violent manner? Uh-huh. It's no surprise that he could not. He couldn't answer. Mr. Sessions, who confessed that he had not read the report, said he would need to, quote, confirm uh -huh. and would reply in writing at a later time. Which means I'm not going to respond. I'm just going to let it go on. Go ahead. The FBI itself admits the, in the report that even by its own definition, quote, BIE violence ha has been rare over the past 20 years. It never happened in the first place. It guys are lying, period. So now, let's get Newsweek article. The Newsweek article... I sent you right after this one. The 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 uh, congresswoman white men have committed more. asked asked him to name some white ones and he couldn't. <laughs> couldn't do it. White men have committed more mass shootings than any other group. They're gonna fly through this. Go down. Go ahead. The deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history was shocking in its scale, but it wasn't a surprise that it was committed by a white male. Because only white folks do that. White folks go around, get a gun out, and shoot everybody. Black folks don't do that stuff. They usually either get high or drunk and pass out in the staircase or something. We don't go around, I'm gonna, I hate my life. Ah! We don't do that stuff. That's white, that's Edomite stuff. We don't do that. Go ahead. Statist if we do, you can count on one hand if we do. Go ahead. Statistics show that since 1982, the majority of mass shootings, 54% were committed by white men. Wow. According to the data from Mother Jones, black people were the second largest perpetrators of mass shootings based on the ethnic background, but only accounted for roughly 16% of the total incidents during the same time period. Go ahead. The average age of the shooters was 35. However, making the perpetrator in Las Vegas a 64-year-old Stephen Paddock. He was old. That was Vegas shooter. Go ahead. 64 years old. Old white dude. Go ahead. Somewhat of an outlier. It is too early to say if mental illness played a role in Paddock's case. No, he's being himself. He's just being himself. You know, they always do Doing that. Oh, something thing. was wrong with him. Yeah, he, yeah, always. He was, he was, he was depressed. He was, he was, no, he was a natural we boy. We do something wrong with thugs, with monsters, do a background check, put our face on the screen. They do something wrong. Oh, he's broken. Oh, he's ill. He had the flu. So he had to get a gun to fix the flu, he felt. He had a sore throat, so he stabbed the guy in the throat. Go ahead. But it has in a number of mass shootings, though it, it is perhaps too frequently pointed to as the primary cause. It's always used as the primary cause. There's always something wrong with them. 
No, they're being themselves. Go ahead. Keep up with this story. No, no, other research. Other research suggests white men commit mass shootings out of a sense of entitlement. But they feel they can. I'm eating them. I'll do what I want to do. I run the world. It's my world. I'll kill who I want. Do what I want. And they get defended each time. They get defended. He's sick. He's ill. It's always an excuse for them. Go ahead. James Holmes, for example, had failed out of his Ph.D. program when he opened fire in a movie theater in Aurora, Y'all Colorado. Y'all remember that? That was a Batman movie. Batman, he shot it up because he failed the Ph.D. program. I'm so mad. I failed the test. Oh, man, get my rifle. Brrr. I got an F. F y'all too. See, the is crazy, man. We don't do that stuff. Go ahead. Dylan Roof was unemployed when he gunned down nine people at the end of a prayer service in a Charleston, South Carolina church. Go ahead. That's nonsense. He, he just hated us. Go ahead. There's a feeling of entitlement that when white men... Yeah, he can, he can afford bullets. He can afford bullets, though. Go ahead. There's a feeling of entitlement that white men have that black men don't. Criminologist James Allen Fox told the Washington Post in 2012, they often complain that their job was taken by blacks or Mexicans or Jews. They blame us for losing their jobs. They feel that a well-paid job is their birthright. It's a blow to their psyche when they lose that. Yeah. If you're a member of a group that hasn't historically experienced underemployment... If you're not black or Mexican, go ahead. There's a far greater stigma to losing a job than those who have. Because we're used to it. We're used to constant unsuccess and failure. So we, we, we've grown, we've been groomed to deal with it. Get a 40, go to the club, get high, watch a movie, hang out with the friends, go sleep around, something. Go, we, handle, we find a way to, to deal with, with life. Edom goes, I'm white. Uh, uh. I'm not a nigga. This is impossible. The dog died. I'm God, and I'm broke. No. I must kill everything now. That's his mindset. Go ahead. But others say it's hard to point to any single factor in terms of why white men have committed most mass shootings. No, they try to watch it down now. Oh, well, we're not really sure. That is the reason why. Try and water it down now. Go ahead. There are pieces to the puzzle, and you put them all on the jigsaw board. And you're still going to have a, a big hole here, there. What I do is that violent what behavior. What I do know is that What I do know behavior. is that violent behavior, whether it's serious violence or minor violence in populations, is never just one thing. It's not a one thing problem. It's going to be an accumulation of things, kind of a whole cocktail of factors. Jump down a high number. Jump down. I don't got much time. Jump down a high number. The high number of white men committing mass shootings is also explained, at least in part by the fact that the fact white people make up a majority of the U.S. population. Lie. 63 percent. And men are more likely to commit violent crime in general. In the U.S., 98 percent of mass shootings and 90 percent of all murders are committed by men. All right. So now get the next one. I want um, RT News, Florida school shooter. This guy. Nicholas Cruz. 19-year-old. Let's see what he did. Police say Florida school shooter confessed. Give details of how he almost got away. Watch this. Go ahead. Watch what he does. The suspect in the Parkland, Florida high school shooting claimed that claimed 17 lives has confessed to the attack. Police have released details of his movements before whoa, whoa, he was captured. Confessed. Like he did it in secret. Confessed to what? He shot everybody openly. What's that confess to? Everyone sees him shooting them. What are you confessing to? You confessing is the secret. He saw, man, these words. Go ahead, go ahead. Nicholas Cruz, 19, was charged on Thursday with premeditated murder of 17 people and wounding another 14 at the Majority Stoneman Douglas High School. He confessed to being the attacker, according to the Broward County Sheriff's Office, reported cited by Associated Press. Uh He told the interrogators that he, quote, began shooting students that he saw in the hallways and on school grounds on Wednesday, and he had... And he had brought additional loaded magazines to the school campus. He came prepared. Additional loaded magazines. Go ahead. To the school campus and kept them hidden in a backpack 
until he got on campus to begin his assault, according to the report. As students began to flee the school, Cruz discarded his AR-15 rifle Ooh. and the vest he was wearing. And he wore a vest. So he could blend in with the crowd. Wow. After successfully... Oh, he sounds sound pretty smart to me so far. You gotta ask yourself the question, how in the world could this white boy go and buy a, a vest? And they allow him to buy that thing with an AR-14, with an AR-15. White privilege. Yeah. Well, he got from the family members. Right. Well, go ahead. As the students, as students began to flee the school. No, no, no. After successfully, after successfully after, leaving, after successfully leaving the school grounds. Uh, watch this. Cruz headed to a Walmart and stopped by a Subway. And a McDonald's. He went and got some food. He was hungry after all that work that he did. He had the munchies. Had the island killed 17 people. Damn, I'm hungry. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Want me a Big Mac. Mm. Go ahead. Broward County Sheriff Scott Hey, remember Dylan Roof? They took Dylan Dylan Roof to McDonald's too, right? Burger King. Burger King. Burger King. He didn't want McDonald's. They passed. He said, no, I don't want McDonald's. Give me the the Whopper. He don't want nine Negroes to give him a Whopper. Go ahead. Broward County Sheriff Scott Izzo said at a news conference on Thursday, Officer Michael Leonard of the Coconut Creek Police Department encountered Cruz about 40 minutes after the suspect had left the McDonald's and decided to confront him. Quote, he complied, he complied with my commands and was taken into custody without any issues. This dude walked off camp. After he killed anybody, he walked off casually. Wow! The dude walked off. They, they escorted him into the... Hey, listen, did you shoot all those 17 people? Yes, I did. Okay, come on this way, sir. Come on. Come on this but way. you got to notice something. And him been black. They would have blew his head off in, uh, in the McDonald's. There you go. That's what you got to see right there. Black burger meat brains felt, all over the floor. Hey, hey, I felt threatened. No, why come nobody didn't feel threatened with this here? He lunged towards me. My car broke down and I ended up dead. They walked him into the car with red carpet under his feet. <laughs> Y'all get this? Wow, man. Wow, white privilege exists. You're retarded if you don't believe otherwise. You're retarded. Go to RT, um, go to um, YouTube, please. His lawyer. YouTube, his lawyer. His, um, his, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Before you go there, go to the paper I sent you, the image I sent you, the newspaper with the black guy's face in the image of the paper, Sun Times. Watch this. Now, this guy killed 17, right? Watch this paper. And it's called, I think it's Sun Times. Is that in Chicago? Sun Times is in Chicago, right? Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing it there. Sometimes it's a sometimes um, Chicago newspaper. Look at this. He killed a cop. His face is in the front. Look on the side. They don't show Nicholas Cruz's face. Seventeen is small print on this side, but he killed one cop. He's on the front page. Where's Cruz's face? This is this is crazy, man. Not justifying what he did, but why is it this guy's face on the on the front page? This is crazy, this man. Craziness. Oh, man, that, that power, man, that privilege. Hey, and if you look, if you read the caption, it says, repeated felon charging cop murder. Suspect dodged officers before fatally shooting. That's what I was about he to He was ask. running away. What was the, I thought I was about to ask. What's he was just trying to get away. Thank you, Deacon. You saw what I was, I, cause I was You understand? About, said, There's got to be more to this here, but they're not going to tell you that. They're going to make right. you think he's a maniac, he's a, he's a this, he's a that. Okay. Yes, just like you said, Deacon. He was we trying to run away, you know, and we know that cops have a propensity for shooting our right. black folk. That's what I wanted to look at. I okay. wanted to look into that. <laughs> but what is the reason that this dude killed 17 people? Man, this is this. this that is this, man targeted 17, this, planned it. But it's a little article about him on the side. Get the video. Get the, get the video, man. Get his lawyer. This is, this, this is needed to wake our people up. That's the reason... Why the most I have these things happen just, because you keep denying reality, the most I gonna continue to bring it to you. I just want a few seconds of it. A few seconds. Yeah, you can play it. Play from the top. Destroyed so walking. many lives here. What do you Shuffled see? Shuffled his way into the courtroom. A nicely dressed pause it. He looked a nicely a white head. dressed white woman holding him on his shoulder, walking him in. Mm-hmm. If that was a Negro, he would have been surrounded by ten of the biggest correction officers you could have found. Look at that white woman walking with him like, come, come with me, come with me. 
Deacon, Deacon. That's comfort. Deacon, they don't want to traumatize oh, him. Look, I'm, I, 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 this is a <laughs> mass murderer. They don't want to traumatize him. You got a nicely white dressed white woman holding him on his back, not, not even pushing him. They would have dragged the Negro out with the shackles, okay, guns, cocked everything to masquerade him before the public. But look how he gets brought into the courtroom. Look. Wow. Let it play. Okay. Okay. On the Video from inside the high school captures the terror of pupils. <laughs> a policeman carrying a survivor to safety. <laughs> Amid this Valentine's Day massacre. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Other pupils were hiding under desks and in cupboards. Some teachers defending students with their bodies and with their very lives. The shooting itself was filmed on a phone. Too distressing to show in full. The opening gunshots are shockingly loud. And this footage shows the moment a heavily armed SWAT team entered a classroom to reach terrified students. Does anybody have bolt cutters? I can get this kid out of the fence. Police radio communications reveal the urgency and the confusion that surrounded their entry into the school. Gary, does he know where the shooter is? We don't know, but we're, we're entering the building, the 13th building, building 13. One student followed a teacher's suggestion and used a textbook as a shield. And she's like, grab a book, grab a book. So I that took a book. It was a tiny lawyer. book, but lawyer. I took a book and I held it. Go to the lawyer. I want to take it to the point. Go up. We have further to the video. Follow it further, not go back, further to the lawyer. But the lawyer's talking, I'm um, defending him. Uh, go back, go back. Go back, go back, go back, go back. And she talks about, she mentions him. Okay, go toward the end. It's not in the end. And she comes to the defense, not the one. It's a video where she comes to his defense. It's a video where she speaks on his behalf. And she's, is it the beginning? Go, go to the beginning. Is that right there? I don't know if it's that. Pulled his way into the courtroom. He looked sullen as he faced the judge. Mr. Are you Nicholas Jacob Cruz? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sir. You are charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder. I have something very important to tell you. You're charged with some very serious crimes. His defense lawyer insists that Cruz has profound regrets. He's Here we go. sad. He's mournful. He's remorseful. Um, he is fully aware of what is going on. And he's just a broken human being. One of those, you, do you have the footage of the family members crying in front of CNN? That basically One of those mothers should have broke forth and slapped the white off her face. Okay, y'all saw the pictures of the parents crying, screaming at Trump. The mother showing a picture of her daughter. You think I want to hear that woman saying that after you just blew my child away? But that's the craftiness of Esau. They're trying to tug on the heartstrings of the people. They're trying to make you believe that, look... Listen. Not, not, that's, <laughs> job. that's why we got to go back to the Bible. In the Bible, that's not justified. You cannot justify the wicked. Okay? There's all this stuff that you see here that's going on in Esau courtroom. That don't work in the Bible. Right. You get put to death. Now, gotta, now one, one thing you have to understand is that Edom, they are, I'm, I say this, they, are, they lack empathy. Yeah. Right. And what I mean is that when they do something wrong, they find some way to justify it or to put it in the past. To forget it, make you forget about it. That's what they do. It's a lack of empathy. And they share this trait. A lot of them share this trait <laughs> tremendously. Some have sense enough to know, okay, we deserve this evil that's done to us. But most of them say, no, well, he's broken. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean. There was a black couple. Their child wandered up in the zoo, went into a gorilla cage. They put the father's record. He has a history of so-and-so. The child, kids wander off. Then there's another history of a... Of a um, of another a white I think it was a white um 
family, they kick, got eaten by a crocodile. The grandfather took him. He vanished off. He got eaten. The grandfather's unknown. No one knows about it. But the black couple, their child, why does the monkeys didn't even kill them? Monkeys, oh, I know you. You Jake. You all right. Well, I got to kill you. You good. You got people. I got to take care of you. But the point is that, the, that they took the parents and put their business out there for the world to see from their child simply wandering off. But this bastard here is broken. The F is broken. The hell out of here. Well, that's garbage. That's nonsense. But this is, that go back to that supremacy. That's that white supremacy, that white privilege, that red privilege. That's, give me a back at one and four. That's what it is. When he heard the 17 counts, he's a woman said that you have, you've been charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder. She said so very him, serious charges. Right, right. <laughs> very, and she had to tell because yes. in his mind, that's what I'm picking up. Like, in his mind, it sounded serious. like he was getting more homework. Right. <laughs> it sounded like, like a partner. Like, oh, you're just giving me more homework. That's how the sentences sound to him. Yeah. Yeah, back at one and four. The book of Habakkuk, chapter one and verse four. Therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. Uh -huh. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. That's why, if you notice, uh, regarding our people, when you see them commit a crime, whatever they put, or even not, not even commit a crime, they get discriminated against. They get, they get harsher judgments or ridicule for a mistake. For a mistake. Whereas Edom can kill 17 people and he gets escorted into a freaking police car. We um, show a sign of any kind of a attempt of, of, of um, what do you say, uh, uh, uncooperation. Resistance. They gun us resistance. Thank you. Yes. They gun us down the street. This dude killed 17 people, go to Subway and McDonald's and go, you the guy that killed those 17 people? This is me, sir. Come with me. Come on, come with me. Come, come with me. <laughs> Okay. Give me the gun. You, you did bad, Billy. I hold, I, I hold it for you. Bad, bad, <laughs> bad, Nicholas. Bad, 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 Nicholas. Good job. Bad, Nicholas. With the black people? Good job. Bad, bad job. <laughs> Demons, man. Demons. Give me um the next video. Oh, give me um the R2 News white nationalist leader. White nationalist. Now, that I, that I posted a little later on. Because a white nationalist group had admitted that he was part of them. He was following them. Then they renege on it and go, no, I made a mistake. White nationalist. Read about White nationalist. nationalist leader backtracks on links to Florida shooter Nicholas Cruz. Uh huh. Go down. The leader of the leader of the Republic of Florida, a local white nationalist group, who earlier told media the suspect in the Florida school yeah, shooting. He'd be, he be a WIE or white identity extremist. They ain't calling him that though. Go ahead. Was associated with his organization, has now backtracked on his words. So he admitted and said he was part of them. Now he's saying, no, he wasn't part of us. Go ahead. Jordan Jareb, the leader of the Republic of Florida, ROF, group, told AP and Anti-Defamation League NGO on Thursday that 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, who has been identified as the shooter that killed 17 people and injured 14 others at the Majority Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland on Wednesday, had participated in ROF's paramilitary drills in Tallahassee. During the shooting, Jareb said Cruz, quote, acted on his own behalf of what he just did and he's solely responsible for what he just did. That's his business. I mean, we ain't telling him to do that. Go down. Hours after the story was picked up by numerous media outlets, Jareb denied the connection in an expletive-laden post on Gab, a social network associated with far-right groups. Alt-right, same thing. Far-right, alt-right, same thing. Go down. So there was legit. There was a legit misunderstanding. Because this is his response regarding um, Nicholas Cruz. Go ahead. There was a legit misunderstanding because we have multiple people named Nicholas. Come on, man. Come on. One, one Nicholas killed 17 people that day. How are you confused about which Nicholas it is? These guys are liars. Such liars, man. Read. There was a legitimate misunderstanding because we have multiple people named Nicholas in ROF. And I got a bunch of conflicting information, and I have not slept for like two days. Oh, my gosh. Go ahead. And so when they call me up and ask me yes or no questions, it's easy for them to misrepresent what I say. He's lying. Well, so he even nicked on what he said. That the guy was part of the group. Now, all of a sudden, I was tired. I didn't sleep in two days. I didn't understand the question. He's not part of our group. It's, come on, man. Hey, 
when somebody with Israel United in Christ got in trouble, they didn't call us and ask us no questions. They went straight to Facebook. They looked for our pictures and blasted it up on yep. the that's news what, and on YouTube. Thinking. This yep. guy here was openly, they say he was a part of it. No picture, no nothing. And not only did the media do that, our own black Israelite brothers did the same exact They're thing. The same thing. Right. They're doing the same thing. Anything happened with any person from IUIC, they don't care. They go straight to Facebook. And I'm talking about the top leaders of their group. They go straight to Facebook. Yep. They look for news articles. And right away, the first, not these white people, these black people who say they're Israelites are the first ones to go to YouTube and to the media to create a campaign to destroy what we build. Those Negroes are urban apologists to say okay? they just They're the no same different thing. from uh, vocab the and the rest thing. of them uh, Europeans that's trying to attack us. Same thing, yep. Give me the next video on Black Panther, White Nationalists at the theater. I want to go to 40 seconds. Now, this is a, this is a um, Jake's going to a, it's written a sheet from um, Hidden Colors. Goes to the theater, and when he goes to the theater, I believe, uh, explain, Kat, explain it. Mississippi, um, he, you find white nationalist groups protesting outside the Black Panther um, feature, screening, at the theater. 40 seconds, go there. All right, we have, go ahead and play it. <laughs> So we're on our way to see Black Panther at the movie theater. They got a cop car literally right in front of the damn theater. <laughs> it's never here. <laughs> this, this ain't, I ain't never seen this shit before. A cop car is right here, letting their presence be known up here. All right. You had a movie theater with these signs, man. You got kids out here, man. Listen. Now, what these signs got to do with a movie, man? What these signs got to do with a movie, man? Huh? Y'all explain this. Hold oh, look, let me zoom in on this one so y'all can see this one too. I guess, I guess if you watch Black Panther, you seen it. Oh yeah, you know, watch Black Panther. You know, Listen, y'all don't do nothing. This is Channel, Channel 12 reporting live from Brookhaven, Mississippi, where they are still doing racist shit like this. So you got the white nationalists protesting black folks going to see Black Panther. And apparently it's a sin to go to see a black superhero movie produced by white folks. Not, I don't know. Just, who who not, knew? Not just white um white nationalists. Christian white nationalists. Yep. Christian white nationalists. It's yep. so-called so -called Christian. They're yeah. apologetics. they peoples. You understand? They are the ones that's out there telling black people, if you go watch this, you're going to go to hell. Yep. <laughs> if you go watch black, the black, the what, go watch a Black Panther movie, you're going to go to hell. How the hell are you going to go to hell? You go watch a Black Panther movie. Go to Isaiah, you understand? Go to Isaiah, yeah. Exactly. It's a damn madness. Go to Isaiah 59, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Our sins have caused us a, a rip between our God and ourselves. That's why in, this condition, that's why in the condition that we're in, Isaiah 59. Because we sin against our God, so the most has put a division between himself and us. At this time. Go ahead. And your sins have hid his face from you uh -huh. that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood. You kill your own people. And your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Go ahead. None call it for justice, nor any plead it for truth. You don't want justice or truth. Go ahead. They trust in vanity. Money, women, lies. Go ahead. And speak lies. They, con they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Jump down to verse um, 7. Verse 7. Their feet run to evil. This is us, by the way. Go ahead. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. We kill on our streets. Go ahead. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. Among our own people. Go ahead. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Go ahead. 
Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but hold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. That. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We're in darkness. We stumble at noonday as in the night. Even in the daytime, we're still blind as a people. Go ahead. We are in desolate places as dead men. We are in desolate places as dead men. Dead men. Give me, um, real quick. Uh, oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Right. Verse 11. We keep that in mind. We are in desolate places as, as dead men. Go ahead. Verse 11. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We cry, we, we, we yell. Go ahead. We look for judgment. We look for justice. Go ahead. But there is none. Acquittal after acquittal after acquittal. Go ahead. For salvation. A, li- a deliverer. Go ahead. But it is far off from us. We're too deep in our sin. Go ahead. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. Our sins testify against us. What we do to each other, the most high has the heathens do to us. Go ahead. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. Go ahead. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God. Because at this time, Israel knew better, but we didn't care. We, we knew better, but we didn't care. We didn't do better. Go ahead. Speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. And read it again. And judgment is turned away backward. We don't get justice. We, we don't get it at all. Go ahead. And justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. It's happening now. Go ahead. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. When you teach the word of God, you are made a prey. Now you're, now you're a BIE. Now you're an extremist. Preaching the Bible, now you're an extremist. Now you're a terrorist now. Go ahead. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Go ahead. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. Uh-huh. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and an helmet of salvation upon his head. So Paul got it from Ephesians 6. Go ahead. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. Talk about Christ now. He's alluding to Christ. Go ahead. And was clad with zeal as a cloak. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. <laughs> so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. What's happening now? They're coming in against us like a flood. Flooding us with lies, propaganda, philosophies, these doctrines. It's all lies. The flood. Go ahead. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. But when they come with the flood, the spirit, it says the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Get real quick, 13 verse 2, Isaiah. When they come with the flood, the lies, the spirit of God shall come up against him to stop it. To stop that flood. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand, that they may go into shake the Shake the hand means teach the people, means shake the hand, or correct them, rebuke them. Go ahead. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. That they may run to white folks and, na- and label us terrorists, extremists. That's going to happen in time. Arrests, killings will happen af- after a while you start bringing forth this word of God. Give me um, um, Psalm 60, verse 4, to see what the standard or the banner is. Psalm 60, verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 60, and verse 4. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee. You have given a banner or a standard to them that fear you. Go ahead. That it may be, dis- that it may be displayed. Maybe what? That it may be displayed. It may be published. It may be spoken, displayed for all to see and hear. Go ahead. Because of the truth. Because Selah. the truth tells us to all praises. That it may be displayed because of the truth. Get Jeremiah 51 verse 12. Jeremiah 51 verse 12. The book of Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 12. Set up a standard upon the walls of Babylon. That's here. Set up a standard upon the walls of Babylon, which is what? The word of God. Go ahead. Display it. Go ahead. Make the watch strong. That's what we're doing in this room. We're making the watchmen strong. Go ahead. Set up the watchmen. Prepare. Set up, means set, means set up more teachers. Set up the watchmen that they may grow. Go ahead. 
Prepare the ambushes. Prepare for, the battle. Go ahead. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. By raising Israel up. Now jump down to verse, what do I want? Jump down to verse um, 24. Verse 24. 25. 25. Behold, I am against the O destroying mountain. Still up front of Babylon. Watch this. Saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. Which destroys the earth. Go ahead, eat them. And I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, uh-huh. and roll thee down from the rocks. And bring you down from power. Go ahead. And will make thee a burnt mountain. Make you a what? Make thee a burnt mountain. Was Babylon burnt? No, it was not. It was overthrown by the Persians. So is this mountain being burnt here is what? America. Babylon the Great. Next verse. I'm going to say it again. Verse 26. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner. They're not going to rebuild it. Go ahead. Nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. So you know it's not a front to ancient Babylon, because Babylon still stands. Iraq still stands. People still live over there. 60 verse 4. Give me um, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7. That the Spirit of God will rise up against them, will raise a standard against them. This is what Paul said in Thessalonians as well. 2 Thessalonians, almost done. 2 Thessalonians... Uh, 2, verse 7. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse 7. This goes in conjunction with the Spirit of God rising up against that flood in Isaiah. 59 and verse 19. Go ahead. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Yeah, Edom, Babylon, go ahead. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He's referring to Rome, all right, which is referring to Edom, okay, which is New Babylon. Read verse 7 again, or America, go ahead. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Meaning, meaning at this time, Edom was Rome. Go ahead. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Most are going to allow him to the rule until it's time to remove him out the way. Next verse is going to say it. And then shall that wicked be revealed. That wicked is Malachi 1 and 4, the border of wickedness. That's referring to Edom. Because he was ruling at this time as Rome. But in the future, he'd be, he would rule as America, which is an extension of Rome. Or Babylon the Great. Go ahead. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Then shall that wicked, so when we're preaching the word of God, we're going to reveal who the wicked is. That's what's happening now. You're in this, we're in this prophecy now. we bringing out the words of the Most High, bringing it out that they are the wicked. That's the reason why it's so much opposition to this truth. Yep. Go ahead. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And once you reveal who the wicked is, the Lord shall, shall come back, return, and do what? And shall... Consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's going into spiritually and physically. He's doing it through us, bringing the word out through his mouth, and he's going to come here and do the same thing literally to the nations. You know, that's how, just thirteen. You know how it's happening on a spiritual level through that word that we read early, pure influence. Yep, pure that's influence. what's that's what's what swallowing them up. Yep. Go ahead. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Go ahead. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan uh-huh. with all power and signs and lying wonders. All powers, his technology, his, his religions, his philosophies, his science. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. With all lies of sin. Go ahead. In them that perish. In them that die. Go ahead. Because they receive not the love of the truth. But loved wickedness. Go ahead. That they might be saved. Go ahead. And for this cause shall... And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Christianity, Islam, go ahead. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, uh-huh. but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Had pleasure in this world. All right, so now, get me real quick, Breitbart.com, about pleasure in wickedness. Pleasure in unrighteousness. Breitbart.com, LGBT. Yep, that's the one. Thank you. So, pleasure in unrighteousness is what America stands for. Black Panther criticized for lack of LGBT representation. We, we, can't, we can't have nothing, man. We can't, they didn't complain about this in Thor. They didn't complain about this in Iron Man 1. No. But because a black movie, a black cast comes out, they have to add the homosexuality in it. They had to do it. Go down. Right there. Marvel Studios' upcoming blockbuster, Black Panther, has been criticized for its lack of LGBT represent- Who cares? representation. Who cares? Go ahead. And the particular exclusion of a lesbian scene 
featured in the comic book on which the superhero film Because like Brother mentioned earlier, in the audience, he mentioned earlier that in the comics, the, the, the special guard was all women. A lot of them are lesbians. Like the Amazons, like in, in uh, Justice League, Wonder Woman, she's, she falls in that. The Amazonians and the royal guard of women, a lot of them are in lesbian relationships. But the movie left that out. Because the actress in the movie is, I guess she wasn't down with that. I ain't with that. Maybe, who knows? But they, they left that out. It's irrelevant. It's called Black Panther. Not Gay Panther. Not Sodom Panther. Black Panther. How is wrong with these homos, man? It's like they just, just insatiably annoying, man. Continuous read on. According to Pink News. Pink News. The whole purpose that doesn't even of, sound right in itself. Pink news. The whole agenda is to is to um, emasculate the black man. Yes, and, that's and, the point. That's the whole purpose. Feminize him. That's what. The, that's the reason why they want it in all our films. They want all of our actors. They want all of our right. r- our musicians to put on a dress and, and all, all this, that. All but they don't say nothing to the so-called white Italians in their nope. mob movies. Nope. Guns all over the place. They don't nope. put that garbage in there. But when it comes to us, they want us to stick a dress on everybody. Right, and all this all inclusiveness thing right here all goes back to Christianity. It's the same exact thing. All inclusive, all loving. It's all Christianity all over again. Go ahead. According to Pink News, when the film was announced, fans were excited by the prospect of Okoye and Ayo. Those are the two characters. That's, that's the military. I think it was uh, Michonne playing that one and the other sister. Go ahead. Two of the title character's bodyguards getting together as Ayo and uh, fellow female warrior Anika do in the comics. And these hopes were encouraged by reports that an early screening of the film featured Walking Dead star Denai Gurias Okoye starring at Ayo flirtatiously as the two danced. However, when fans of the comics watched Black Panther during early screenings, they noticed an absence of lesbian romance. So what? It's called Black Panther. Go ahead, play. And immediately started a Twitter campaign under the hashtag Let Ayo Have a Girlfriend, using terms such as, quote, lesbian erasure. Erasure. Excellent. So we can't have nothing. We can't have nothing. That's supposed to be those two supposed to be lovers. In the comics, they're lovers in the comics. Most of them are lovers, period, in the comics. Which is why, which is one, like I said before, in the movie, if you look through the movie carefully, I'm telling you, there's certain things in there. The indirect influence in there that's not good. We're happy about Black Panther, but you have to look through the sin. There's sin up in there. And this is part. They point, and Homos pointed it out. These two should be a couple. In the comics, they're a couple. But in the movie, they're not. Or, or it's not expressed strongly that they are. Who cares? Oh, they care. They, Edom cares. Why? <laughs> Revelations 11, verse 8. This is why. Revelations 11, verse 8. Oh, go to the images real quick, the Facebook images, what, what Esau did as well. So, so the, the gain, they, come, they come against the movie with the homosexuality, with the sodomy, or sodomitises. They come against them with this, and this also. So you have Black Panther, Twitter fan, bans trolls who claim white cinema goers were being attacked at screenings. So you have Edomites basically complaining that when they wanted to see Black Panther amongst the black folks, they were viciously attacked. And it's all a lie. Go down to the pictures, images real quick, the fake images. I went to see Black Panther with my girlfriend and a black teenager shot at you at the wrong theater and smashed a bottle on her face. This is not real. This is not real. And they have the real images. They have the fake one and the real one, how it was doctored. Did you, did you find those? Okay. They have, what the re, they have what the real images, and they edited that stuff because they know that people are simple and stupid. It's the same thing. My greatest fear... It's what the public is going to make you lie. They're going to get you to believe against us. Okay? Because it was it, in the ancient times, it was hard to move on the men. Like I said, they wanted to grab uh, certain men, but they wouldn't do it because the people were loyal. This generation of people you see now, there's no loyalty to, to them. Your loyalty is to YouTube, to Twitter, to whatever the white man puts in your head. Back then, it was difficult for you to be able to stir up the people against the men of God. This generation of people is the worst. There's some people, even as we speak, if the media makes up a lie about us, you know, it's the first thing. I knew it. I always knew it. I knew they was like that. 
The same people that have been coming here, they're going to be the same ones rallying against them, telling their family members, I knew it. Okay, so it's easy to take lies like that and put it up because some of y'all are that simple. If Esau would go this far to stage things like this here, you got to think about the reasoning behind this. It's all because they're, what they're telling you is that that the mind, your if 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 the movie or the Bible can have any any influence on your thinking, they will go to these extremes to keep your mind from being corrected. Their their, their fear is that this movie just might put put some positive thoughts in their mind and they will go to these extremes that shows you how powerful just like the scriptures say as a man thinketh so is he if your if their, their fear is that if your mind is turned around a little bit in the positive direction that can move mountains and they said we will go through any extreme to make sure that you don't get that done that's how you gotta see these things revelations real quick 11 verse 8 remember Isaiah said they shall lie in, de in desolate places as dead men. In Isaiah 59, verse 19. Revelation 11, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, and verse 8. You, must, you have to understand where we are in prophecy. Read this here. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Our dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is America, Babylon, the great God. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Spiritually is called Sodom. And Egypt. Sodom is a key word there. Sodom, because this place is spiritually Sodom. They're advocating oppression with Egypt and they're advocating homosexuality when it comes to Sodom upon our dead bodies. But when those dead bodies start to rise up, like in Ezekiel, into an exceeding great army, that's when that great fear falls among them. And they're doing all these rallies against us, having these summits, um, putting up these videos against us. That's where the fear comes propaganda, in. Propaganda, lies. Right, the slander, the, the propaganda. The slander. Get Baruch 3, verse 4. We're almost done. Baruch 3, verse 4. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 4. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Right, go ahead. And of their children, which have sinned before thee, and not hearken unto the voice of thee, their God. For the which caused these plagues cleave unto us. Right, captivity. Jump down to verse 10. Verse 10, how happeneth it, Israel, that thou art waxing, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxing old in a strange country. No longer a young lion, now we're old. Go ahead. That thou art defiled with the dead. We are defiled with the dead. We are as dead bodies in that great city, Revelation 11, verse 8, in spiritual Sodom and Egypt. Jump, let's go to um, Lamentations 2. Lamentations 2, which verse? Verse 1 to 2. The, the book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto earth the beauty of Israel? So we were once in a heavenly condition. We were ruling, and he cast us down from heaven. Go ahead. And remember. Unto the earth means hell. We are in hell now. Hell is not a place you die. You are already, we are already spiritually dead in hell now. Wherever Israel is held captive, we are dead in that place, suffering. Go ahead. And remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. Go ahead. The Lord hath swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob and hath not pitied. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought them down to the ground. To hell, to the earth. Go ahead. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. We are polluted. We are spiritually dead. Our dead bodies. That's polluted. You touch a dead body, it's polluted. Go to Job 10, verse 21. So most are cast from rulership from heaven, a heavenly condition, to a hellish, enslaved condition. Job, let's see what Job prophesied regarding that place. Job 10, 21. Remember Ezekiel talked about the valley of dry bones, that graveyard, that valley. The book of Job, chapter 10, verse 21. That valley is the valley of the shadow of death in Psalms. 23, that's that place. That valley of dry bones is the valley of the shadow of death. That's what it is. That's what we are now. From Psalms 23, verse 4, I believe. Go ahead. Verse 1 and down. Go ahead. Job chapter 10, verse 21. Watch this. Before I go whence, I shall not return. Even to the land of darkness. This is Job prophesying of our, of our, of our people's condition later on in the last days. Read again. 
Before I go whence, I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. And the valley of the shadow of death. Go ahead. A land of darkness. A land of darkness. Go ahead. As darkness itself. The land is darkness itself. The land of this place here primarily is the land of darkness itself. This is a, the gross evil is found here and spreads everywhere else. This place has the most influence among all nations. So this is the place where there's gross darkness where Israel is found. Read again. A land of darkness as darkness itself. Uh-huh. And of the shadow of death. Watch this. Without any order. Without any order. Homosexuals have rights. Blacks have, have no rights at all. Edomites are called um, autistic and disabled. Black folks are called thugs and hoodlums. They do crimes. There's no order here. The law is slack here. There's no justice and judgment here. Fair justice and judgment here. There is without any order. Go ahead. Without any order. And where the light is as darkness. And where the light is as darkness. Meaning the good is bad. I mean bad is instead of good. Where, love, where evil is considered righteousness. That's where we are now. Get Matthew 16, verse 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. And I go say... On. Where do dead bodies go? Graves. graves. Another word for grave in the Bible. Hell. 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 Another word for grave is hell in the Bible. Matthew 16, verse 18. Watch this. Now, gates represents... Leaders. Leadership, the areas where people have judged, they judge at the gates. So when you read the word gates here, it's referring to the leaders. Read that, Matthew 16, verse 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. And I, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock... Christ, will, rock, Christ, um, Christ is that rock. Go ahead. And upon this rock I will build my church. Uh -huh. And the gates of hell... And the gates of what? And the gates of hell, the gates of hell, go ahead, shall not prevail against it. And the leaders of hell or slavery, captivity, shall not prevail against it. Isaiah 5, one more. Isaiah 5, this will make it clear. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ is that rock. He's that wisdom, that pure influence that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. No matter what plots or secret plans or popular persuasions or commotions they set up, it will fail. 5 and 13? Yeah, Isaiah 5, 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 13. Therefore, my people are going into captivity. Remember, Lamentations said that, he, that the Most High swallowed Israel up with a cloud in his anger. In Lamentations 2. Read it again. Therefore, my people are going into captivity uh -huh. because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Bones, valley of dry bones. The valley of dry bones. Dried up with thirst. Same exact thing being said. Go ahead. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Therefore hell has enlarged herself. Go ahead. And opened her mouth without measure. To do what? To swallow us up. Go ahead. And their glory, and their multitude, and their pump. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. So it says, hell have enlarged herself. 13, verse, verse 13 again. Verse 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity. Verse 14. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity. 14. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. What is hell? Captivity. Captivity. And in that captivity, we are spiritually dead. In gross darkness. Give me um, wisdom of Psalm 730. So as we rise up out of those graves and the breath enters into us, we pose a threat to the world itself. And therefore we become terrorists or extremists. And they try to rally up through popular persuasions to stop this truth, which they cannot stop. Because it's written, it's in stone already. You ain't stopping this. Wisdom of Psalm 7 and verse 29. The book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7, verse 29. For she is more beautiful than the sun. Wisdom. Go ahead. The laws of God. Go ahead. And above all the order of stars. The brightest. Go ahead. Being compared with the light, she is found before it. Brighter, brighter than light. Go ahead. For after this cometh night. After this light comes night. Darkness. Go ahead. But vice shall not prevail against wisdom. But the gates of hell, hell shall not prevail against her. Vice shall not prevail against wisdom or Christ, the spirit of Christ. 
it should not stop this movement at all. You understand? So with that, we'll stop it right there. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org